Is there a difference to you between recognizing symptoms in yourself versus diagnosing yourself? I mean, I don't really think so. Those are basically the okay, same process. Okay, if you don't recognize the difference between these two I, things, then I don't different. understand. I don't understand why you are having or trying to have these conversations when you're ill-equipped to do so. I don't understand. How you don't recognize the difference between a diagnosis of something versus recognizing symptoms. Because if you would just like, at the end of every round, a panel of three judges: Katarana, uh, Denebo, and uh, surprise uh, guest judge Vadim Newquest, host of Creationist Cat, will be hosting. Will be judging your performance. If you do poorly or do not talk enough, you'll be eliminated. If you do good enough, you'll stay in. I want no complaints. The odds of you winning the championship, considering the amount of people here, is 6.25%. So please enter, in the, enter this knowing that most likely you're a humegalol who is going to lose. If you do that, then you can't get your feelings hurt. Is that how it's pronounced? Hum, hum Look at you, Xander. Humeleg? Yeah, I'm a WH Omegalol, I know. Now... Oh, Besides is that, that the Xander? The Do rules, I hate no him? Slurs, no, that's TOS, Xavier. No, and no, no, no attacks based on immutable characteristics. That means no going after anybody because of their race, gender, mm -hmm. uh, sexual orientation, uh, identity, or anything of that sort. What if they're as immutably can... stupid? Uh, that's fine. Is religion fine? Uh, religion? Um... <laughs> oh, God. Let's just, let's just pretend the question wasn't asked. Anyway. Well, what about if they're Jewish? Is that like religious or ethnic? Is that okay? Okay, or? we're not. Okay, you know what? We're not going after religion. We're taking that off the table. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> welcome to the championship. We're going to start the first round, which will be about 25 minutes before the first person is voted off and replaced. The first topic is how is Biden doing as president? How is he doing as president? Is he doing a decent job? Is he doing a bad job? Uh, I will introduce you all because we don't have time for intros. The people on your screen right now is American Nacho on the top left. Next to him is Counterpoints. Next to them is Demon Mama. Next to them is Destiny. Uh, I, of course, am Dylan Burns TV, your luxurious host. Next to me is Sprouticus. Then it is Trihex. Then Xander Hall. Then Loner Box. You can find all the information in the description of the YouTube video that will be produced afterwards. You may pre begin. Please remember to follow the rules and remember... You know, um, always be nice. Make sugar your favorite spice. You may begin. Yeah. All right, guys, what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with his response to COVID, his infrastructure plan, uh, immigration? Where do we want to start? Are you saying that it's with, positive I or negative? The fact, I want to start with the fact that the first problem Biden encountered, he directly handed it off to his vice president. Like the first actual problem he went into office and encountered, it was, OK, this is Kamala Harris's problem. What problem mine. was that? What problem was that? The, immigration. immigration and the border wall. Yeah, she went so over to up. what was it? Was it? I think it was Guatemala. I think it was where she did like a a statement about it, where she talked yeah, about how they're going to be giving. I think it was two or three trillion dollars in aid. Um, I forget what country it is. It's in South America, and it's got like we have a lot of immigrants that come to there due to the crime and the corruption of the government. She said she's going to uh, the Biden administration is going to be uh, funneling a ton of money over there to help root out the corruption and and stem the crime it didn't even want her there though first off that country that country didn't even want her there second off she still hasn't been to the border the closest she got was 30 miles away in san antonio that is the yeah, closest i don't know why this is like wait wait one at a time wait one at a time the first person i heard was talk was destiny so i'm gonna give it to him yeah so number one delegating things to your vp is not a bad thing i don't know why i would make that sound like a bad thing um and number two who the fuck cares if you actually go to the border wall or not i mean i guess we can talk about like the optics of how that looks but i think it's probably more relevant to talk about border wall policy whether or not you have a photo op of the border wall it's not just a photo op, though, is, though, is it? It's, it's more than a photo op. You're going down the border to see what's on the ground for, your own, with your own eyes because that's really how you get a perspective of what's going on is when you look at it through your own eyes. You can say no, Destiny, all you want, but this is how presidents have done it for decades, okay? When something goes down, they go there. Um, and Biden, de Biden decided that it was Kamala Harris's problem, and Kamala Harris didn't even go there. The entire Biden presidency has since been a joke. Um, Biden, Biden, yeah, so all, wait, Biden did about, a, all, that, all Biden did about COVID was wait, he wait, adopted Trump's topic, plan with a to, few minor don't, changes. Don't hop to, don't hop to, don't hop to, don't I'm just this. saying that it's a bit of a joke. Like, okay, hold on. This is, this is really silly. Fucking, it is absolutely normal for, for presidents to delegate tasks to their vice president. This is a, a, a like completely invented grievance. If we're going to talk about things that like Biden has and hasn't done, I have a couple things I could bring up. One of the things, a bit of a, a bit of a topic that's in my wheelhouse that Biden has done really well, which is a civil and social victory, is that uh, he has now uh, instated a federal policy by which trans people can have uh, without the without needing a 
a complex and incredibly lengthy process actually change their uh, gender marker and name on their passport um, again, without a whole pile of paperwork that's necessary. Um, that's really, really awesome. In fact, they're also going to be adding in an option for a um, non-binary gender selection on passports, which is huge and not something that's likely to be undone. One of the things that I most praised about Obama was the fact that Obama actually put into place a policy by which you could get your uh, your passport changed just with a, with a note from your doctor. You no longer need that now, which is fantastic. Um, I support that very much. The other, the only problem with Obama's version was that it was immediately undone by Trump. This is not one that can do that. By adding a non-binary option, it becomes very difficult to undo. That is a civil rights victory. With regard to COVID, I mean, look, uh, anything is better than what Trump did. Trump literally went around saying that COVID wasn't a problem. Right now, uh, I'm just checking just out of curiosity on Bing here. Fatal cases of, of COVID in America is a 612,000. So, you know, uh, I'm just going to say, damn, uh, uh, Biden's done a pretty good job getting the vaccination out to people. We've had a significant drop in deaths from COVID. Nearly, after nearly COVID. half of all, nearly half of all uh, adult Americans are fully vaccinated. It's you been pretty it. significant. Pretty um, on his first day in office, in his first, in his first hundred days in office, Biden uh, enacted, I believe, it was executive order to mandate mask wearing on federal property and mandatory uh, qu uh, quarantines for international travel. Uh, uh, travel um, two trillion in spending on um, on COVID relief. Pretty damn significant. Way better than Trump. Trump's uh, administration didn't have any plans whatsoever for vaccine rollout. They found that during the um, the transition. Biden's plan far more constructive. An actual plan for starters that exists um, and has had a much larger effect. We're actually starting to see things go back to normal. I thought I was on a panel. Wait, 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 wait. Counterpoints. I said anything yet? He was the first to grab it. Counter. Sure, sure, sure. I thought I was on a panel with a bunch of leftists. Why are we blowing a neoliberal fascist? What are we doing here? Like, is this just going to be a circle oh, jerk about how fucking- I'm sorry, have you ever seen me call Biden a neoliberal fascist? Because I don't know if you're aware of my content, but I spent basically the last uh, two years, almost three years that I've been doing this, uh, shilling for Biden over Trump, okay? There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever at any point that I've been doing this, that uh, uh, Biden but, was a better pick I, than But Trump. I thought this was all tactical. I, th I thought it was all tactical because, you know, Trump was like the actual fascist and, you know, the, the Biden and the Democrats are just this like ineffectual fucking stop gap for fucking you know like no. if you want me to complain about democrats if you want me to complain about democrats we can talk about the infrastructure bill and those that won't vote on it um or that won't support it but i'm not going to take away uh, achievements that Biden has made because I have criticisms of him. That's not but how you taking, honestly yeah, critique you're, take, you're taking them away from Trump. You're taking them it's, away from Trump because but, all like all the large majority of what Biden has done so far for COVID. The large majority of what Biden has done so far for COVID was following Trump's guide was following Trump's guidelines and how he was going to act in the future. He made very Nobody little to no changes. That. He made Nobody he made very that. little he made very it's little to no changes to the actual plan and Biden just carried out what Trump was going to do. That's all Biden did. Trump there was no plan. Trump. The Biden Biden's role was not plan. Pause. Oh god, this is like a nightmare. I don't know if I can. Mom is the one who jumping into this conversation. Didn't Loderbox, like... Loderbox say anything yet? Appreciate that. So there's a couple of things I could say here. First of all, if we want to go into critiques of, of Biden, I do have a very solid critique that I would like to make of Biden. But I think that it's fair to give credit where credit is due. Even me, a, a extreme lefty. I think it's very good. We are in a time of extreme crisis and that the good things that are done should be praised. I think that the uh, the goal that he has of pushing through the human infrastructure plan is absolutely necessary for um, for our economy. Uh, keep in mind, a pandemic is a is a, a disaster that affects individual people. It, it affects individual people. They get sick and that damages the economy. We need stuff like that. But if you want to know what my critique of Biden is, well, my critique is that he doesn't have an answer that's good enough for climate change. Climate change is a global threat. I mean, I've been doing so much research on climate change recently, and it is horrifying. If you even go look at the flooding in Germany, literally unprecedented flooding in Germany, if we have something like that happen here, I have no doubt, given our preparedness 
for something like the pandemic that we're not ready. And I think that Biden needs to be willing to do aggressive action. And I just don't think he is. I think he's too committed to uh, trying to play bipartisanship with people who are straight up obstructing him every step of the way, sometimes to the degree of just straight up inhumanity, the the unwillingness to, to even engage with the idea that we might need to provide some relief during a global pandemic. And we're supposed to be ready for climate change, a climate change that by that is surpassing every single prediction that we've had so far, which were already dangerous. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Biden needs to really spine up on that. If you want my criticism of it, that's the biggest one. Climate change is is terrorizing our entire country already. We have a drought currently declared in uh, where I live. We have droughts all over California. We have fires. We've this. begun Holy to have shit. smoke seasons. We're going to be having flooding if we get heavy rains. This is a super, super serious issue that Biden, I mean, for all of his talking about wanting to do an infrastructure plan, simply hasn't pushed hard enough. They need to play dirty. This is a a, a matter of of being willing to play hardball. With the so Republican I have a quick question. Jim and Mama, wait, can, can I? Can yeah, I yeah, just, or, sorry, it's, yeah. Xander, can I go there? Because I was yeah, I was Lona, Lona was next, yeah. and then we'll throw it to counter. Just want to be okay. yeah. clear. Cool, cool, cool. Just so, to put the wait, just I to put the COVID after me. Wait, is Lona Box after me, or is it is it Lona Box? I, I'm, then Lona Box, then counterpoints. I, think I don't know. I was for... You know, act like a man okay, and get okay. it yourself. Oh, okay. Very quickly. So, Demon Mama, okay. I I understand that. However, it seems like wait, did you not hear me? Xander, I said it would be Loner. Okay, let Loner do it, okay. Thank you. Um, just to put the COVID relief bill into context, that was, with accounting for time, that was the biggest fiscal stimulus in American peacetime. So uh, I think I heard someone in the background saying that it was more private companies that, no. Um, as for Connor, uh, yeah, leftists having a, a uh, favorable view of Biden. Okay, I'm, I'm a leftist, I hate Biden. I wouldn't trust him to sit the right way in a toilet seat, but Looking at what he's done so far, politicians are not leaders. A politician's job is to read the room, power relations, public opinion, et cetera, and make a decision. As far as that goes, Biden has so far broken with a very long lasting economic orthodoxy in America that was the legacy of Obama, of Clinton, Bush, Trump. The idea that uh, by basically introducing the idea that state intervention in the economy in a time of pretty desperate social need actually works. Uh, I'm from Europe. We do it all the time. You should try it. Uh, when it comes to it, but of course, there's plenty of room for criticism, not just from a leftist perspective. We'll complain about everything. The climate plan and the jobs bill do have pl plenty of flaws. They don't really live up even in some ways to the standards of the people who promoted it. Uh, it's not very cohesive. The infrastructure plan doesn't really uh, melt that well with a climate plan, the way that their uh, high-speed rail project is very limited compared to how many roads they want to build. Well, building roads means you get more cars and that doesn't really gel very well with the climate plan. But so we can talk about that. But yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes liberals do things right. It's it's OK. To, OK, so so I have a quick left. question for the leftists or whatever that I think would be uh, helpful to ask is basically like oftentimes we bitch about how the right wing is like fiscally conservative when it's inconvenient to do so. Um, and as far as I understand, inflation is basically like the printing of money in relation to economic activity. Um, and as much as we want to pretend that we can just do what we've done with the stimulus, which I think was good, by the way, and necessary, um, we have seen some logistical shortages. Uh, right now, um, when it comes to housing, I think housing is up 30%. I think the value of vehicles is up 30%. I think construction materials, uh, some construction materials are up 200, 300%. Um, and as far as I understand, I literally just talked to an MMT guy a few weeks ago, is that uh, basically it's not necessarily the printing of money that's the problem. It's the printing of money in relation to like no economic activity. So are we, are we willing to concede as a panel that uh, basically you can't endlessly print money to solve problems or that these things need to be balanced or or, uh, you know, like, like, is the right wing completely useless and we should just print whatever the fuck we want, whatever it's we not, want? I don't think it's a question of like, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, don't think it's I, I, well, I don't think it's an MMT or like job is going to be to look at everything through the lens of like printing money. But I mean, when you look at coming out of like a historic downturn in like the global supply chain, if you're going to see prices that are inflated, it's probably not inflation caused to monetary policy. It's probably inflation caused to like a failure in the supply chain. So like there have been factories all over the world that have had workers laid off um, that have have like been closed for long periods of time or that have had other problems or other shortages. And when that happens, it's going to drive up the cost of goods, especially coming out of a pandemic now when people are starting to buy things more than they were before, when 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 these factors are trying to get the production back online, you're going to start to see flies, uh, prices be inflated. But economists are going to be worried to call that inflation until we've gotten like a few quarters through it to see where the prices ultimately end up at. OK, at the, at the risk of being productive on a rumble panel, uh, basically uh, what that conversation boiled down to was the fact that that's been the case all of the time, whether you're talking about the 
the Weimar Republic, Venezuela, or any of these uh, prior examples, it basically is a relation of like logistical breakdown in relation to printing of money supply. So I know that you're saying like it's the logistical issues, not the inflation. Um, but that's basically was like the historical analysis that w was presented to me was that that was always the case. Um, and yeah. COVID, no, it, no. one second, one second, almost done. Um, and then COVID very specifically is basically like one of the most drastic downturns in economic activity. You're talking about like, I don't know, 30% of like the workforce basically going to a work from home or partial work model. We're talking about retail and restaurant kind of revolutionizing over the past two years. Um, so I would say that we don't know what the fuck is going on and we don't know what's going to happen. So all I'm looking for is a little bit of concern session and nuance and i'll leave it there because well, you so can think about comparisons though. because wait you wait. can think about you mama demon was trying to go in after i'm gonna give it to there you go. thank you i appreciate that um so yeah look, it's not just a matter of like of concessions or anything like printing money isn't the only way to reallocate funds we have funds that go all over the place we have a ton of money that goes into the u.s military we have a ton of money that go that is lost in tax cuts that have been made to uh the highest the highest of the highest um, income uh, income earners in the country. We have taxes that that um, have been cut based on on the size of enormous companies like Amazon. These are ways that we can get the money that we need. But what we do know is that there's been a that that COVID has sh like killed tons and tons of small businesses. COVID has killed uh, employment. Like there's a a retail worker shortage in America right now because it is so difficult to uh, to re to get everybody back in for things that are opening up. And of course. That's not even getting into uh, talking about what happens if there's like a second wing of this pandemic with Delta variant, Lambda variant, whatever. The problem is that it's not just about printing money. Sure, that's one possible solution. There are many possible solutions. And I think the Dems need to be pushing very hard on that. Because here's the thing, if what you're saying is true, that there's logistical issues, well, the logistics has been knocked out. It seems to me that it would be essential for the, this is the perfect time for the government to say, we need to jumpstart this logistics. We need to get things up and running again. We need to fund small businesses so that people can start making things again, so that people can start working again. We need to make sure that people have buffer um, so that they don't become homeless and lose their homes that worsens the economy. Just so you know, like people who don't have a home, it's really hard for them to get a job or work. That's gonna seriously impact people's abilities to get their businesses up, uh, up running, especially if we're talking about corporations, like massive corporations who were able to weather the pandemic. And then they're going to have like old, like outdated hiring practices where they're not gonna hire people because, oh, we, you know, maybe you don't have the right level of, of, of experience or whatever, they're gonna have shortages. So we seriously need the government to step in and go, we've experienced a global pandemic that has killed an, an, an all, a, a, a shocking number of people. We need to jumpstart the economy. I don't care if it's done through printing money or if it's done through reallocating taxes or if it's done through moving funds from somewhere else. But the reality is that America okay. Is a country that's this supposed timer to serve is six seconds short We're supposed too, to be but I started late. Like, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call a time on that because that that went on for a while. I do want to throw it. To, uh, perfectly. Uh, it's like two minutes and twelve seconds Sand almost. Loner, because Loner didn't want to talk. Jesus well. Christ. Yeah, so um, I agree mostly with Demon Mama on that, but I think one of the things that people are missing out on is that um, a huge part of the pandemic was also a realization um, that certain industries are kind of outdated. I think the biggest example of this is movie theaters. You're seeing some movies being pushed into theaters and some people returning, especially as vaccines get rolled out more. Um, but you're also seeing some uh, some areas where movies are not being put in theaters and instead they're being viewed even more so on streaming services. I didn't go to a movie theater to watch the new Black Widow movie. I watched it on Disney plus so you're going to see a lot of movie theaters shutting down people losing jobs from that not to mention a huge way that the economy is fueled is by people spending you got to spend and and that typically results in the economy growing unfortunately right now due to the pandemic a lot of people are short on money or they're hoarding it because they don't know what's coming they want to make sure they can pay bills if people have the money to be able to buy things not just their basic uh you know groceries that they need and whatnot you're going to see the economy grow a lot of people have been saying and staying inside saving their money if they even have money they might have lost their jobs um uh, stimulus bills are a good way of dealing with this and i've i've oh, not, not much more money Whoa. but yeah. Biden's, I don't want to call. I'm gonna oh block God, that shot and to throw come. it the loner. Oh my God! I'm sorry. Dude, yeah, just maybe. Uh, yeah, because every time when I hear people talking about this, I feel like it's always worth remi remember, like reminding people just how not very overwhelming a lot of this is. Like it, it's overwhelming in the sense that America hasn't really done anything like this since I don't know the, maybe the 60s. But like if you look at the comparison to other countries like one of the things in this uh, infrastructure plan is like that they said was groundbreaking is like uh, half a million uh, electric vehicle charging points well compare that to germany much smaller country they're going for a million so um 
as far as comparing to other countries, like this isn't as dramatic as it might seem. And then, I, I don't know, with inflation, then yeah, if there are inflationary pressures, then you have to maybe raise interest rates or God forbid, raise taxes. And maybe that's why this kind of plan is starting with Biden kind of testing the waters because there is a, there's going to be a big political risk there involved down the line. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not that so well, far, it's pretty movie, underwhelming. I'm giving I'm giving it to uh, Sprouticus, and then I'm going to give it to Trihex, who hasn't talked in a while. Moving it back a little bit, there's there's a reason. Dima Mala brings up all the people who uh, aren't working, right? There's a reason people aren't working. It's because Biden has failed to do his job. Biden has failed to end the federal unemployment bonuses that people are getting. People are getting paid way too much to sit at home and to not be going to look for a job. And that is what that is what is hurting the job market. What Biden needed to do was he needed to end those benefits and start pushing people to go out and get a job. But the re reason they're not is because they're comfortable getting money. They're comfortable not working a job and they're just going to continue to get Get this extra money and not work a job until Biden until Biden ended it. Now that Biden did end it way later than he should have, um, states are still continuing to keep this going. Um, states even even like Indiana uh, with the Rhino who is the governor of Indiana, um, it's still going in Indiana. Uh, but this this is the reason you see the shortage in job market. It's not because people aren't don't need money. It's because there's too much money being sent by the government to these people to where they don't feel that they need to work. Do you mind yeah, if I, kind of I don't. Yeah. I don't think that there's was, any people getting unemployment <laughs> that that are okay. not getting a job because Wait. they think unemployment Man. is. Yeah, is enough. I don't think there's a lot of people. I mean, doing that's that. just empirically false. Like the most. I mean, it's not empirically at false. Around, it's like, actually. If you look at the there's three people rates. talking at the same time. Okay, try hex. Well, actually, before I even clap on that, folks, way your earlier point here about like the crisis at the border wall and all that, bro. I think I think you're consuming way too much Fox News propaganda because. What you're what you're really rooting here is the, the idea that if like ex politicians not visit the border to see He's the crisis going on right there, that yeah. obviously they, they don't care. Subordinates can't go, uh, you know, traverse there, visit there, and then relay information to the appropriate people so they can carry out the agenda required necessary to what they were uh, told in the first place. But I even go back further here because whenever like because because what the frame you gave there is one that's reminiscent to me of like whenever someone like AOC visited uh, the border detention centers and you know cried and was and was like really at the straw from what she was witnessing um you know that got played up in ex-partisan mainstream media outlets as like a, oh look at them doing their thing now so honestly i feel like what you're doing there is the same shit that you see elsewhere whenever it's you know whenever it's the side you want to hate on doing it as well so i think that point was completely garbage and then going into the whole thing i do about, want to say you're yes. getting a lot of points deducted right now for terrible fucking mic quality um, I am. You're, oh, you're, you're, oh, you're I'm wrong. Oh, okay. yeah. Ooh, ooh. I'm Damn. sorry. Um, fuck. No one told me. No one I'll bring it back to you after somebody else grabs it. Yeah, yeah, my bad. So, um, so, so try hex. Try hex. You're, you're gonna try. I mean, he kind of came after me, but go ahead. He kind of came after me, but go ahead. Yeah, but no, you, you you addressed me directly. I just wanna I just wanna address that. So first of all, like this stuff about like, oh yeah, people who are already struggling and unemployed, they'll just they'll just go they'll go get a job uh, if you force them to go out. That's, that is just ridiculous. First of all, that doesn't happen in any other country. Like, uh, Canada was was giving a universal basic income, and their economy uh, had you know people were still spending, people were still buying food. It, it's it's very stabilizing. The idea that like you make more money on unemployment. Uh, than you do with the job. It's just it's just ridiculous. People aren't going out because of a couple reasons. One, they can't find the work. Two, they can't actually get the job because of whatever reason. Or three, um, they're still scared of the pandemic or their workplace no longer exists anymore. Like this is just this is just like literally like stock. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like I don't I don't feel like this is a serious argument. The idea like oh yeah, if you give them uh, unemployment during a global pandemic where six hundred thousand Americans over 600,000 Americans have died, that it's just like, it should be, it should be, it should reflect on them. This idea of like, like secret welfare queens sucking up everything. That's so ridiculous. This is fear mongering. It doesn't have any basis in reality. And never was so, as a real quick thing. And, so, and build off of that. No, because I have a point. I have a point, another point that I want to say, something that I wanted to okay, respond give, to. I, I give you, I'm going to give you 15 seconds and then we got to move it on. Cause we only have three minutes left in the round. I wanted to address something specific to that, that Zan brought up, which is, you know, it'd be amazing to see something that we had in America for a very long time, public arts pro projects. You want to get people spending, you want to get people out doing things in the economy again, have the government fund and, and put some stuff out there. Movie theaters are gone under. Let's get that stuff. Out. Never, never, never once, never once did I suggest. Sounds cool. After never Sprout, once we're going to Destiny, then Trihex, and we're ending the round.
Never once did I suggest that the, the extra unemployment benefits wasn't needed during the coronavirus. We are in the recovery stage. It needed to be ended far before Biden actually ended it. And actually, where you see a lot of un, well, a lot of people not going to jobs, a lot of people that are seeking for jobs, it's uh, low skilled jobs. And these low skilled jobs, the, in some states, in most states, they're making more money off of the federal unemployment benefits than they would be if they actually went to work. Um, so the idea that you're saying that uh, people aren't people aren't doing this, people aren't doing this, it's fear mongering. It's not. Um, it's not fear mongering at all. And going back to Trihex, talking about the border wall, um, or the border. Uh, so Kamala Harris was in charge of the border. Uh, it's been. It's been. Uh, it's been. Precedent uh, for decades that presidents and or whoever's in charge of whatever goes down and checks it out with their own eyes, not send someone else down to come back and report to them. Um, that's just been precedent, especially when you're going through a crisis like we were going through the border no, crisis. Uh, but not only that, but Biden actually Biden actually yeah. reversed a lot of what was going on, right? So Biden actually made a made the uh, made the border a lot worse than it was during we gotta, Trump. Sprout, we got to cut you off. We're running out okay. of time. I have to throw the trihex destiny. You both got like thirty seconds max. Okay. Okay, um, whatever you were talking about earlier is a bunch of nonsense here. Ultimately, it's inadequate wages going on in the first place right there. They've always been trash. They've been stagnant for a very, very long time now since, what, 2009. Um, uh, increasing the minimum wages is an overwhelmingly popular thing. It's even been popular in Republican utopia of Florida. And uh, that has failed to be done because uh, too many moderate Democrat senators are, are pieces of shit, obviously. And I can shit on both ends on that spectrum completely here. And uh, obviously, you should be pro um you should be pro some kind of injection of of um, of wealth into like this declining, shrinking middle class because uh, the poverty, the poverty, um, the poverty floor in this country is really, really bad. That means, and long long story short, it's really, really bad for the economy overall when you have a de declining, shrinking middle class altogether. Um, just kind of keeping some bullet points there as I'm short on time. Okay, gotta throw it over to Destiny. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of rumors about, uh, firstly, Canada didn't have a UBI. Um, secondly, there's a lot of points being brought up about how unemployment insurance might be causing an increase in unemployment in states. A ton of economists have dug into that data. They've looked at like different industries that are affected by unemployment insurance, different industries that aren't, different states that have ended early. Uh, most economists believe that there's like a marginal impact, like a very small impact on unemployment insurance on the current unemployment rate. So the idea that UI is better people working is probably not true. To bring it back to like, has Biden done a good job or not a good job? The amount of stimulus that the United States has poured into its citizens over the like entire coronavirus pandemic period has been higher than I think any other countries in the world except for like Japan. Uh, we've spent a ton of stimulus in this country. A lot of that came from the Biden coronavirus relief bill, which I think is awesome. Um, that is a form of UBI to people that have children that file for their child tax credit early. Uh, I think it's one of the coolest things that Biden's done. And I think that's why he's been a base president over the coronavirus period. I have, oh, round's over. I have already been told by the judges who's getting kicked out for this round. So, Three votes. Oh, well, two of them actually. Wait, let me wait for Badim. Badim. Wait, I missed the rules. Who, who votes? Does chat vote or is no? Like... Fuck chat. Okay, fuck chat. Or True. Fuck chat. Yeah, I don't trust chat. Well, with two votes in, I don't really need to wait for the third vote. We already have two votes in for the same person. I'm sorry to say, uh, and Vadim, please send it through Twitter DMs in the future. Um, America Nacho, I'm sorry to say, you are out of here. Um. I gotta say, you have gone the furthest in hippy dippy history with saying absolutely nothing in a contestant's history. Um, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I think it was a huge statement Old. on on centrism, and I love it. Yeah, true. Okay, you really right, are like doing doing nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. See you later. Bro. Hug. Okay. Cool. Like that. Wonderful. Okay, next person, Aircraft Sparky, has entered the arena. A conservative commentator on. Twitch and YouTube, okay? You guys can go to the next topic. It is the death penalty. Should it be abolished? Should it be kept? You may begin. It should be abolished. It is on the, the onus is on those that support the death penalty to prove that it provides any useful function to society. I've looked into it. It does not. It seems it has no effect in deterring crime. It doesn't seem to make people uh, feel as though justice been, has been served. I think the utility caused by the likelihood of innocent people being falsely uh, uh, found guilty and given the death penalty is bad. I think that the cost of it is far more than housing a prisoner for the le rest of their lives. There is no uh, reason whatsoever to have the death penalty. It is stupid. stupid. Agreed and yes, agreed. I, and agreed. I couldn't agree more with. Uh, yeah, that was. With, yeah, I think that. Uh, so everybody I, that disagrees. I really, yes. That? No, I say, yeah. Do, wait, do we have people who are on with the de death penalty? Yeah. Look, yes. I don't think that, I don't think the state should have the ability um, to declare. 
uh, life, uh, the the life, the, the future life or, or death of uh, somebody who's already been, um, you know, uh, apprehended and has been uh, imprisoned or whatever. I have problems with the, we could go further into the prison uh, system, but we don't even need to talk about that. The death penalty doesn't do anything for us. It's barbaric. It makes us look terrible. Um, and in addition, um, it leads to a lot of very questionable situations. I mean, we've had, I, I think many people on this panel are probably aware of the uh, extended uh, torment that certain uh, death row uh, inmates have had when their uh, when their execution goes incorrectly. As it turns out, there's no real humane way to kill somebody, and there's a lot of room for that to go wrong. And that is sickening and disgusting. Okay. And Mama, I don't. The that, big thing to point out there, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I feel like right. this is worth bringing up, is that uh, a lot of the time there can be lack of access to the proper proper chemicals used for lethal injection, which is mostly what you use now, and so they revert back to older or not as useful chemicals, which can result in a prolonged and uh, much more painful death. Not to mention, um, yes. and, and I guess we can get to this in, in a moment, but I mean, there's tons of cases of people. Um, who were apprehended by the police, who were falsely identified by witnesses, because sometimes when a witness sees something traumatic happening, like a murder, they may misidentify. The police can uh, bully and coerce false uh, um, confessions out of, out of su suspects. There's a lot of cases that can occur and have occurred of the wrong person getting the death penalty. I believe 165 or more people since 1976 have been exonerated after being on death row, and those are just the people who were found to be innocent. Isn't that, isn't that a good thing, though? Isn't that a good thing that 165 people who are on death row were, were found to be exonerated uh, because the courts actually did their jobs with the appeals process and found out that these people uh, actually weren't guilty and the they, they, they weren't deserving? Let them finish. Let them finish. I'm interested. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. 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 I'm, I want to hear him finish. I want to hear him finish. So you are you 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 started this off saying I'm making uh, the uh, people who are pro the death penalty have the onus to do this because they have to prove it. You would then you would then therefore following your own logic have to prove that there was someone that there was a large amount of people that died from the death penalty that were innocent. So I'm going to look forward to you coming no, through no, 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 no. with no, that, with that thought process. Um, do you can't even say it's my point. Cool. Because if you if you're wait, also I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. I have to finish. Wait. It was it was the right. It was directed. Wait, it was directed towards Xander Hall. Xander Hall should respond. Yeah. Okay. Right. We got to make it quick because a lot of people. It's, it's very quick. Spoticus, if you had a bowl full of jelly beans and you pulled a bunch of them out and you found that 152 of those jelly beans were poison, would you feel very confident in continuing to eat that bowl of jelly beans? Because that's basically what you're what you're advocating for here in a more simplified way. If there was 150, 556 people that were found to be uh, innocent that were taken off of death row, do you think there's a lot of people that haven't been found? Not to mention that's not even getting into the fact that once you kill a suspect, you now have gotten completely rid of the ability for that suspect to contribute more to the case to find out if there were accomplices, someone who made them do it. I think there was a case that Sean talked about in his video on the death penalty from the UK and Wales, where a guy uh, uh, took the fall for his neighbor who murdered his wife and child um, because he was trying to protect that neighbor and didn't know that it wasn't an accident. There's so many cases where executing the person who's the suspect gets rid of any ability to continue an investigation into the case. So I think there's like yeah, a, so, also, the way, also, so the way, so the way, please, 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 please. Okay, okay, I want to build off that. 20 seconds. Uh, that's fine. I only need 20 seconds. Listen, so this is, again, you misunderstood what Zan's argument was in the beginning. You have to prove why we should kill people. Uh, and what benefit that provides to society. Because as it is right now, it doesn't seem to be providing any benefit, and it's incredibly expensive. The appeals process, holding somebody on death row, is ridiculously expensive to our entire country, in addition to the moral issues that are brought up with the death penalty. Okay, I think, I feel like most so of the arguments... Okay. I, so I feel I like mean, most of the arguments that are brought up in, in against the death penalty don't really work. Um, the jelly bean analogy doesn't work. Would you eat one jelly bean if, or would you eat a jelly bean out of 150 if one was poison? I mean, like we essentially make this deal every single time we get into a car and drives, every single time we get into an airplane and go somewhere. Like we, we make this deal all the time. Um, in terms of whether or not it's barbaric, I mean, like it's the death penalty, of course. But if you've decided as a society that you want to punish somebody that's committed certain capital offenses with death, I mean, barbarism probably isn't that far away from what you're trying to do. In terms of like, could it go wrong? Yeah, a lot of things could go wrong. That's not an argument not to do something. 
And in terms of being ex expensive, I mean, again, that's a societal decision to make. I'm opposed to the death penalty because I think that it fundamentally betrays what ret what uh, what the justice system should be about, which is rehabilitation. When you have an idea that you can commit an offense that's so heinous that like you ought to be killed or moved from society, I think that that type of mentality guides like the entire way that we view the criminal justice system. And I think that we should change like the idea of like punishment or retribution into something different like rehabilitation. But I find that most of the arguments that people use that are uh, opposed to the death penalty end up just like not really working because they don't really make much sense. Um, we've gone through the Jellybean one, we've gone through the, like, is it barbaric? Uh, like something else people will say is that like, oh, well, life in prison is actually more cruel than the death penalty. So that's why we shouldn't have the death penalty. It's better punishment. Okay, well, what about the people now that have to suffer for life in prison who were innocent instead of those that could have been executed, which would be better? Like, I find that most of the, uh, these arguments just don't make any sense. So can I give some I mean, Bailey? Okay, okay, one of my, um, I would like to give some Bailey. Can I respond to Destiny's point? Can I respond to Destiny's point? I mean, Sandra Hall, you've interrupted me twice trying to respond. Well, okay. Sorry, it's fine, because I love you, buddy. Okay, so there's a lot of people who talked here. Everybody who just tried to talk, raise your hand quick, okay? Um, I haven't heard Counterpoints talk, and I haven't heard Aircraft Sparky talk, so I think we're going to have to throw it to them. Okay, so I'm going to give you some Bailey instead of some Mott. So there are certain crimes that I think should be punishable by death. Those include infanticide, tor uh, terrorism, and torture murder. If you were to look at these as anecdotal cases, basically as individualistic cases, I almost guarantee you I could convince some of y'all that these motherfuckers deserve to die, basically. I also think that you can raise the evidentiary standard to beyond a shadow of a doubt. Dashkar Sarnayev is an example of that. Anders Brevik is another example of that. People who we know beyond a shadow of a doubt committed the crimes that they committed. For those of you who are uh, unfamiliar, Dashkar Sarnayev is the Boston bomber. He killed, uh, I believe, an eight-year-old among amongst his victims and maimed uh, dozens of other people. Uh, I be believe Anders Brevrick killed around like, you know, it was between like 100 and like 200 people with bombings and executions. Some of those people he literally executed right in front of each other, uh, you know, simultaneously moving on and on. Last time I got into this debate, I was told that I was not allowed to describe the crimes that people committed, which I think is like, I get it's like, you know, Twitch TOS or whatever, but that's insane to me that we can have a conversation about whether or not death is a valid punishment for a certain crime but we can't talk about the kinds of crimes that we're talking about where death should be administered. Um, so basically, I said that we don't have to go with the current standard with which, uh, you know, innocence is basically, uh, you know, up up to doubt. We can go with beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, uh, thing. So then to bring to overcome some of your objections, you said no humane way to kill somebody. I don't you know, I refuse to believe that there's probably like pounds and pounds and tons and tons of heroin on the fucking street. Let's go get a fucking purity test and send them out on a fucking OD like that's an easy fucking solution administrative cost again if we move to the beyond the shadow of a doubt statute then we basically don't have to have as uh, uh, as uh, sincere of like administrative costs to retry the case dozens and dozens and dozens of times we can literally say did this motherfucker do it yes he did there's the 99.9999999999 percent evidence that they did do it including their own admissions and digital forensics and all that kind of stuff sorry buddy you fucking killed a, a, a eight-year-old blap here's some heroin here's some heroin and then as you fine as Okay, so, yeah, I so just one, why we can't wait. Social wait, final okay, point, final why? point, final point, social okay, utility. Cousins. Okay. Final point, social utility. Anders Brevik bitched about having a fucking PS2 after murdering two hundred people and said that that was cruel and inhumane. Fuck that motherfucker. He deserves to hey, be in the ground. Uh, Dear mama. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you haven't you still haven't provided an argument for why we should do it. I do also agree with Destiny, though I think that the argument that um that uh that like the death penalty sets the standard for the rest of our uh uh you know prison system and our justice system I, I think that's a valid argument but i will note that that does basically boil down to a barbarity argument our our prison system is ultimately barbaric it doesn't work towards uh uh justice it works or rehabilitation it works instead towards punit uh punitive solu solutions that often don't even work and this is the thing like people say oh well it's more torturous to for people who have to live in life well, maybe we shouldn't be torturing them. They've been apprehended. Maybe we should try to make a genuine effort to understand what led to people to be in these places, keep them away from where they can't hurt anybody. But why? What, what benefit? There's been nobody has actually been able to put out what benefit is there from killing these people, from having the state have the ability to summarily execute somebody. Come, this is this is basic. You have to answer that question, and it hasn't been answered. It simply hasn't. All right. Okay. I, 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 First of all, there are just some crimes that are just so heinous. The only way there is no there is no reform for it. it is nothing but retribution that needs to be have. I'm looking at child murderers. I'm looking at people who do adult things with children. Yes, I believe that they should get the axe. And no, it should not have to be something clean and so humane. I am all for it. get the guillotine, let it drop. Gravity does its work and is cheap, recyclable. Man, 
Just think of all the great things that can happen. When you look look at it, there are just some crimes that are just so heinous that there is no chance for reform. We're not going to let them back out to the public. Why should people even bother with feeding them anymore? Look, if you're a mass murderer, if you kill 30 people, chances are you're not going to be reformed, nor are you going to get out of prison. That is heinous. Now, there are states that do not allow the death penalty, and that's all well and good. Look, the people have made their decision there. But in the states where it does exist, allow it to exist. It is a state-by-state deal. States' rights is a real thing. And the people have decided that it is perfectly fine. I'm all for bringing back the electric chair. I don't care if they suffer when they die, just as long as they die and the world is rid of them. That's what it comes down to. So in a nutshell, I I raised my hand five minutes ago. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Yeah, Lona Box has not gone yet, and I want to make sure he has a chance. I don't want a nacho situation. My guardian angel. So there was one argument there, and it was retribution. That's kind of what you just said. Uh, retribution for who exactly? The victims, the relatives of the victims? Because you all said that you obviously don't want innocent people getting executed. So that means typically what we have now is people have to stay on death row for a very, very long time before we actually determine 100% whether or not they were guilty. Um, I think there's been research done on this. I can probably find it that this does not provide any comfort or closure to the families of victims because it's an ongoing process. It is limbo. It's uh, indeterminate. It's stressful. It's it, it doesn't provide the thing you're saying it provides. And that's actually the only argument that pro death Actually, I didn't claim that so it gives far, closure it to the happen. family at all. I didn't claim that at all. Because so that doesn't actually respond, happen. That's a response to uh, Connor points. That was towards Connor points, I think. I want to respond to both of you guys really quickly. Um, uh, sorry, what's your name on the top left? Aircraft Sparky, how you doing, buddy? Air, aircraft Sparky and Connor points really quickly. So I think uh, both of your claims are downright un-American and ineffectual. Um, the idea of our <laughs> justice system, the idea of the American, we can laugh if you want to, but I mean, it's a simple fact. I'm laughing. The American justice system, the entire idea around it is that emotion is completely separated from the court proceedings. When you're being tried, you don't have a bunch of, there's a reason why you have an unbiased jury of your peers. You don't want the types of people who have an emotional bias against the person who's on trial to be punishing them. That's not what our, our justice system is about. Um, not to mention, I already brought this up earlier, but I guess we can dive into it further if you'd like. Um, once you've executed a suspect, they can no longer talk. There's been, and just like Connor points talked about before cases where someone is found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt um i think it happened in florida back in i think it was like the 80s where a couple came out of a hotel and uh, the wife was shot the husband identified a person the police interrogated that person the person confessed guess what ended up happening one the husband missaw and the person who confessed guess what happened was bullied into it by the police this happens plenty it was found without a reasonable doubt in court and you know what happened because that person had a confession bullied out of them the police did not go after a warrant to search the person's house to see if there was any evidence they actually did it. Turned out he didn't do it, and it was all in the police. Our justice system, unfortunately, is flawed. There will be cases where there where someone is found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt at all, and it's just not the case. And you don't okay, want to deal with that. Wait, 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 wait. I don't care because the round's over. Oh, it's going to tickle some balls. That this is the fifteen minute round. You actually brought up a good point, though. Yeah, look, my great point is that the round's over and we all stop talking. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. So I'm getting the votes in right now. The first vote, I'll actually read the votes out. It's more suspenseful. The first vote is for Sprouticus to be knocked out. The second vote is for Trihex to be knocked out. And the last vote is also for Trihex to be knocked out. Trihex, Damn. it sorry, seems bro. that the lack of talking this round was the decider. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Trihex. It's all still, good. Still a beautiful man. It's all good. Yeah. You want to know what? how you're the real winner? You got to play the new... You got to play Skyward Sword. The Skyward Sword. Before I did. I didn't get the remaster today. I pre-ordered it, too. No, it's all good. My Actually, my Joy-Cons broke, um, so I ended up playing with my Pro Controller, which, like, really sucks for that game. But, you know, it's, it's wow. all good. It's all good. Um, the only thing I was gonna have before I dip out here was I was gonna say that uh, I, I was gonna make sure that we in the beginning we were gonna challenge our framing that we were not gonna conflate here support or against death penalty automatically being indicative of whether we are for or against life in prison or assisted suicide. Because I feel like oftentimes the three things kind of get automatically conflated together. And I was gonna hop in here and tear that, but it was already so heated from the very jump of some like subjective stuff altogether. But 
It's all good, y'all. I got I gotta go to bed. I got you tomorrow anyway. So keep lifting. I'll see y'all next time. Have a good one, Trihex. Eat, eat me. Have a good one. Eat. Eat. Okay. Okay. The next person is Hunter Avalone enters the ring. Hunter Avalone. Wonderful. Now the next topic, and What's I only up? released the first two topics because I wanted to make sure that the rest of them would be spicy surprises because we don't have surprise guests, so we at least need surprise topics. And this oh, one no. is uh, this one's going to be an easy one, and I, I think we can all come together. The issue is mental health, specifically self-diagnosis. Oh. I'll, uh, all right, I'm getting I'll the popcorn out on Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let but I'm getting Wait. the popcorn out for this one, baby. Okay, you may all begin. Right. Self-diagnosis, can I, oh, look, yeah, uh, I can look, open on this. As it, as it is, I, I, I can make an executive oh, decision to let Demon Mama open on it. Okay, <sighs> thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, self-diagnosis is, is super, super important. It is the, usually the first step that people take before they get a formal diagnosis. Very, very valuable process. Um, and uh, many, many, many mental health professionals uh, recommend this with regard to mental health. In America, a lot of people grin and bear it. They, they think that there's something wrong with them, but they don't look at it as a matter of mental health. They look at it as a moral failing. Being able to recognize in yourself the symptoms of various conditions is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important to actually being able to get treatment and care for those issues that's right for you. Now, mental health is complicated. In America, a lot of people don't have health coverage. And in fact, good on Biden for pushing uh, Medicare to have uh, mental health coverage, which it, it is going to do if his if his uh, package gets passed. We'll see, um, which would be great. But a lot of people don't have mental health coverage in America. They might be looking at a $1,000 bill just to see a therapist or just to see a psychiatrist. Being able to recognize in yourself the symptoms of, mental, uh, of a potential mental disorder is incredibly, incredibly important to having a good prognosis for that disorder. And not every single disorder requires medication or, or structured therapy. Some people, like uh, say if you have, um, I don't know, ADHD, maybe you just see, find out that you need to change your habits a little bit and you're doing a whole lot better. That is a fantastic and important process. But when you, uh, be yeah, able that's my stance on self-diagnosis. So, so, but with Let with self-diagnosis, I agree. I agree. It can be it can be an important tool to, for going towards a medical diagnosis. <laughs> but, but but when you put it when you when you put it in the terms of it is arguably more important than a medical diagnosis is asinine to me. I don't know how this is more important than a medical diagnosis. Yes. And to go to, to go as to go as far as to say the only the only uh, when you go to a world where doctors say to, where doctors say that uh, are the only people that can say you have a mental health disorder is a world full of asylums and gatekeeping is absolutely insane. Um, doctors, doctors, are, doctors are the ones. Are. Doctors are the ones that go through eight years of college for this. Doctors are the ones that are trained to understand what mental health does, what mental health disorders are and which ones are which because it can be very easy to misconflate one mental health disorder for another. Um, such as you can think you have depression when actually you have anxiety. Um, and you're not going to fix true. depression and uh, anxiety in the same way. So. Oh, it's just so I think um, I think that um I, I just think that we're not making here is the fact that we're going right, we'll one at a time. Okay. Yeah, a lot of you will talk. Can I respond to that? Was directly any mouths. Okay. Yeah. Demon Mama, I'll let Demon Mama respond, but we got to keep this short because these rounds are getting shorter and shorter. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, doctors are also the ones who lobotomized Rose Kennedy. Um, I think I got the name right. Um, doctors no, also did this lobotomized. No. This is this is bad, Demon no. Mama. I have to really just can't go anti-doctor. This is this is anti-intellectual. Excuse me, please. If you no, are all don't yell to... over oh, me when I'm trying to respond excuse to you. Me. Excuse me. Demon I mama, literally... you're better than this. Wait a minute. She's not. Excuse don't... me. <laughs> God, no, she is. Excuse me. Wait, is this... But seriously, this is anti-intellectualism. This is like when Lauren you Southern stop. came on and told me that. I this literally is like when didn't Lauren even so... get to finish my point. All right. I didn't even get to start all right, go. my go response. Ahead, sorry. sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, um, this is not anti-intellectual. This is recognizing that there are flaws in our medical system. There are great injustices that yeah, have been but... carried out by our medical system. That doesn't mean that I'm anti. I've literally never once advocated for anti-doctor and any anti-doctor anything. But you in fact, are right now. That's what you're doing. It. Hunter, I understand, but you need to let me finish a point. I know you're very, very ready to jump at whatever straw man you have summed up about my position. Wait, can I mean, you please okay, make her don't talk? Don't do the ad-homs. Really if we have little you time, don't do the ad-homs. Okay, okay, I got to say, we don't have a limited time, so I'm going to give Z-Mama like 30 seconds and nobody interrupt her, okay? Go. 
Yeah, I'm not. I am never once have have stated anything that is anti doctor. All I've pointed out is that there are problems in our system for a very long time until just about 10 years ago. It was considered a mental condition to be trans, just to be trans. In fact, uh, within like I think it was about 30 years, it was considered a mental a mental disorder to be gay. We recognize these are errors. The, our our medical system is not perfect. The idea that the medical system is beyond reproach or that we can't point that out is absurd. Now that is truly an anti intellectual, and doctors will tell you this. In fact, if you go to any major uh, 30 seconds. Mental health done. System. 30 seconds okay. is over. Cool. Next? Start yeah. Okay. They, I, I, I'm going to throw it to Destiny because I. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, blaze this real quick. So, first of all, self-diagnosis is not the first step to anything. That's not true. No doctor will tell you that. Recognizing symptoms in yourself is not the same as diagnosing a disease in yourself. This is a crucial error that a lot of people make. A self-diagnosis involves you finding some disease that you think you have, and it might lead you into like starting to misidentify symptoms because you want to identify with something, or you think that you identify with something. Self-diagnosis is absolutely not the first step to anything. It's recognizing symptoms in yourself, and then giving that handful of symptoms to a medical professional that can help diagnose you if they feel it's appropriate for some condition to help you get treatment for it. Many mental health professionals do not not recommend self-diagnosis. That is absolutely not true. You will not find a single medical professional that will tell you, oh yeah, you should definitely diagnose yourself with a disease and then give that disease to the doctor when you're going to talk to them. The idea that many people don't have mental health coverage, that it costs a thousand dollars to see a therapist, thousand dollars is really high generally Destiny. for a therapist. Yeah? Destiny, we gotta move, we gotta move. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. Okay, go. That's fine. Go. Move. So, yeah, let me go next. Let me go next. I'm gonna, been, trust been, me, been, wait, wait, wait. Let me be clear. Get... Everybody shut the fuck up, okay? I didn't say anybody go that. Xander Hall. All right, yeah. Are so you the I host? No, no, Xander Hall. I was fucking asking you. I, Okay. I'm not the host. I think you're the host. Yes. Okay. So we're going to throw it to counterpoints. Okay. Because he had his hand up for the longest period of time. But I also want to say this topic is going to go on for a few rounds. Okay. Very cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So basically, uh, as the enlightened centrist here, I think I can split the difference. So I think what Demon Mama is saying, uh, and excuse me if I straw man, is basically that being aware and cognizant of symptoms and being aware and cognizant of different diseases can help you basically figure out what your problem is. It's a, it's very Jordan Peterson of Demon Mama to say that you need to pick yourself up and you know you need to analyze your situation. You need to imagine hell below you and heaven above you. And you need to strive towards the ideals and through your society by identifying your problems and then working them through them slowly. I know Demon Mama is a massive fan of Jordan Peterson. Um, so that that's basically like, you know, I, I really appreciate yeah, that about her. I think, that, I think the term, hold on, we're almost there. So so I think the term that we're getting uh, hung up on is diagnosis. And I, I think the, the problem here is that diagnosis often involves, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, basically involves coming to a conclusion about a series of symptoms about a disease that basically would confer all of these symptoms. I think that if we were to split the difference here, and this will be my final point, is basically recognizing the symptoms symptoms and being informed on the symptoms so you can feed that to a professional so you can get an accurate diagnosis would be the the difference between these two perspectives and i'll yield right there okay I think yeah a I lot of wait 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 everybody's been responding to me and it's, it's really yeah, interesting because yeah, i haven't even had so that. many that's so many words Dude, mom's already talking two minutes okay. this round let other people get responses in. well wait a minute that's not my problem you all chose to what? make this about me this because is like you had the opening statement you, all right i want the next opening opening. Okay. Well, I, go, okay, I still have look. to talk to demon look, mom about being anti intellectual the longest we debate about who's going next the less time there is in the round and the less time there is in the round the less chance you have to actually speak more likely you're going to get voted out and if you piss me off i'm gonna get executive edition and vote you out myself okay so I just want to make that clear for anybody who's pissing me off, Xander. So we're going to throw it to Hunter. Yes. Okay. So, Demon Mama, I do understand what you're coming from about self di self diagnosing. Okay. But what you are doing is anti intellectualism. And at very least, you are empowering anti intellectualism. Because when you bring up these examples of doctors making mistakes, what you're doing there is you're trying to validate a broader narrative that doctors cannot be trusted. And that is anti intellectual. Second of all, Self-diagnosing can, in very many ways, be actually a detriment to your health. For example, I have an example here. Bipolar and depression both have very similar symptoms, but if you self-diagnose yourself for depression when you actually have bipolar, it could make your bipolar even worse. So self-diagnosing and understanding your symptoms, being aware, that's fine, but the actual process of diagnosing that's dependent on a doctor be, be based on your qualitative symptoms and, or based on your qualitative experience and a symptom, the, the symptoms that they already under, uh, understand. Wait, wait, okay, okay. Dima Mama's going to respond to this because that's two people in a row. Sure. I do want to give it to them to respond. Yeah. yeah, by the way, then I have like sparking. a number of studies here I can cite if we want to get really into that, but we're limited on time. Um, so, uh, the funny thing here is first of all, no, I'm not anti-intellectual. The idea that you cannot critique or you cannot point out massive flaws in our medical system. That is, that is, that is categorically anti-intellectual. Science is based. But that's not what on you're doing. Excuse me. Excuse me. 
Science is based on challenging these things, even sometimes from an activist perspective, saying, hey, there's a problem here. Categorizing being trans as mentally ill, categorizing being gay as mentally ill. These are mistakes. These are mistakes that are caused by bias and, and ideology that can get into our medical system and they can ingrain themselves very well. You have to be able to challenge that and provide an argument. This is not anti-intellectual. This is the core. This is why it's anti-intellectual. Well, the reason, one minute, the reason I'm not done with the first, let, 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 let the minute, come on, come on, demon. Right, okay, I, know, I understand, very, very, let, we, we're gonna have a multiple rounds to do this, okay? This is gonna be like three deposit, like three rounds, okay? So be get, let, let's let the demon mom finish, the thorns and sparky, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some sort of uh, like sort of semantic thing as to whether people think that a self-diagnosis is final. Um, I don't know what this is referencing to. I've never said, first of all, not even doctors give final diagnoses. If there's an issue with the di doctors give diagnoses all the time that they later change. This is a medical fact. You cannot contest this. Uncontestable. Doctors change their diagnosis all the time when new information arises. A self-diagnosis is just that first step. That's now, if you want to call though. it something else. That's only one me. half of your I argument. Don't, I don't. I, stop up. Please. Excuse me. I know. I, okay. I again, That's Hunter. Like, I can't please, help but feel like. Please, okay, we're moving on. Okay, aircraft. I'm sorry. Like, if it's gonna be like every time I interrupt somebody, I know that da 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 da. I know well, you're I mean, acting you know, this way. Like, we I can't. But the, it's gonna. These rounds are very short and concise. Okay, and I know maybe Twitch streamers are the best before that. We have to do that. Aircraft. Then loner. Look, I'm trying to give the best, the best, most generous interpretation of what you said, Demon Mama. I've watched your video, and I've actually watched the man right below me's response to it. And look, I understand what you're saying. Look, if you are aware enough to understand what's going on, you should go get help, go see a doctor, and a doctor will actually help you come to the actual true diagnosis. But to sit there and claim that you self-diagnose, I understand your argument with the whole trans thing, because a lot of people don't get the chance to go to the doctor and... They identify as trans before they are diagnosed as trans. Okay, I get that. That's rhetorical stuff. But when it comes down to it, there's a lot. There's tons of of mental conditions that people do not understand fully. In fact, I had to go get some help for some, some counseling post-war, and I didn't even know there was anything wrong. It was my wife that told me, hey, look, you changed since you come back. And I moped around for about eight or nine months, and had it not been for a doctor actually sitting down, Breaking down everything, I would have never known there was anything wrong because, well, I mean, it is what it is. So I, I think it was framed. I think your argument was framed wrong. I understand in the most generous sense of what you were trying to say. I'm not going to say you're 100% wrong, but I just think the wording that you did just made it seem a little, mm, no, uh, just not not good. Okay, but Steve, that's, I, I hear where you're coming Sparky. from. I hate, I hate it when you just uh, can't that transgender diagnosis. Gotta, but uh, wait, can I respond yeah, to him really quick? Oh, I haven't talked about I said loaner box. Can, can I the loaner, then we have to end, Yeah, loaner box, then we have to end the round. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, I didn't really follow this drama at all because I don't hate myself, but I'll just go with what I've heard from here. So, like, yeah, self-diagnosis, just as a broad term, like, yeah, I can see the idea there because it's like if you go to a doctor and say like yeah I think I'm depressed that you know that's kind of like a self-diagnosis and your doctors and in inevitably like it is a science but they actually they don't scan your brain they just ask you about your feelings and a self-diagnosis can be a feeling so and you know like uh, I've I've read Foucault I know that there's weird power relations going on between doctors and uh, ordinary people sometimes but it's like you know, with psychology that you can say that like the first psychologists, you know, were child abusers and cokeheads and all that shit. The DSM was just a group of doctors shouting diagnoses at each other and filling in a book like on the fly. But it's come along since then. You could actually make that criticism of all medicine. So you could say, I don't know, self-diagnosed, but like it's always your diagnosis is not going to be 99.999% of the time as informed as the doctors. And it, although it's a power relation, I think it's a healthy one generally. That, okay. That's fair. I, so I, the good thing the is vote, the never person voted. Anything. The person. End of the round. Person getting voted out. First vote is for Sproutagus. Again. The second vote is for Aircraft Sparky. The third vote is for Aircraft Sparky. I'm sorry, Aircraft. This plane has crashed. Hey, it's all good. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, good talking to y'all. Have care. a good one. Have a good one. Okay. So we're going to throw the. Throw it back over to Zan, then is going to go to Demon. 
Right. So I think that there is definitely some utility in being able to, I guess, start to think about what uh, issues might you might be dealing with psychologically. Um, I think there's a huge problem with people misunderstanding uh, psychological conditions in this country. A lot of, especially young people who aren't super aware of it, may uh, have depression and confuse that for BPD. That's very common. Um, and it is very hard to get your hands on somebody who can help you uh, get a formal diagnosis for a medical condition. But I do think there's a lot of um, uh, utility in that. If if you find yourself waking up every morning feeling like shit, you've got no motivation, um, maybe it is worth considering. Maybe you've got depression. What should I do about that? How can I help with that? But at the same time, um, you should always take the word of a doctor or medical professional um, or multiple over your own self-diagnosis that maybe what you found on the internet. And I don't think anybody here, like Demon Mama or whatever, disagrees with that. But can, 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 I, yeah. can I go? I have to go to oh, adult shit was, real quick. Does Demon Mama disagree with that? Wait, wait okay. Um, I... Counter, uh, I'm going to throw the counter then demon because counter hasn't talked in a little bit. So I think it's only fair. Okay. Counter. Okay. So, so the definition is the identification of nature of, of an illness or other by examination of the symptoms. I could understand if we were to split the difference through this uh, definition, then basically demon mom would be saying, analyze the symptoms, try to come up with a diagnosis, not because you basically like want to self-diagnose, but because uh, you want to start analyzing the problem. And Xander Hall, I think what you said is very similar to what Jordan Peterson said. Oh, like, you know, basically see yourself as an agent of order in a world of chaos, you know, basically start from scratch, analyze the things that you can control and the things that you can't control. And, and then basically like, you know, move up from there. So I really appreciate everybody coming out and standing Dr. Jordan Peterson in this conversation. Uh, with that, Jordan I have to Peterson's go. Jordan right on some things. Don't get me wrong. I think that absolutely <laughs> cleaning your room. Hey, listen, I will stand by Jordan Peters' statement that you should clean your room and it'll make you feel a little bit better to the day I die. I feel right. great after I clean my fucking room. Of course, yeah. A analyzing yourself and what you're going through, if you're feeling like shit, then it's probably because you've got some stuff going on. Try to find a medical professional to help you, but there's ways that you can, without needing to sp spend money or go out of your way to find a medical professional, that you can analyze your mental health and help improve it. Absolutely. Okay. I got to go. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Xander, I'm proud of you for cleaning out your cum socks. Now we're throwing it over to Demon Mama. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's really funny because everybody here has sort of been fighting a straw man of what they think my position is. I really wonder why that might have happened. Hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, so it's it's really interesting. We have tons and like we have an entire. Nothing uh, triggers me more than when we are like limited on time of, um, and she takes time of, to like uh, throw these snide little remarks. Even, it reminds even, me when I was talking to Vosh on the Going to the um, point of Walmart, you can go panel. into Walmart and really you can buy irritating. yeast infection medication because you can self diagnose a yeast infection. Yeah, wow, amazing. It's almost like we actually do trust people to some degree to self diagnose. Now it's interesting. People have come up with all these weird straw men that I've never said, literally never once said avoid a doctor, literally never once said like self med or any of these things. You've been coming up with the most extreme examples because you need me to look bad because you know and everybody here knows that self-diagnosis is a thing that normally happens that understanding these things is essential and not only that but again i have study after study after study here i can drop them in the chat if you want to that shows that patients that are more informed about themselves their potential diagnosis their potential final diagnosis which is never final no diagnosis is final even with cancer it's not final you could find something that's totally different but, th no but th this increases diagnosis. their outcomes self-diagnosis is a natural part now if you want to try and split hairs and say, ah, uh, we don't want to call it self-diagnosis or whatever, that's fine. But this this stuff, like, I don't know, I think uh, I think it was Destiny who earlier uh, this week, maybe even yesterday, said that it's like, oh, it's like collecting Pokemon or something like that. I've literally never said anything like this. And I would appreciate people actually engage with my arguments instead of engaging in, like, extremely question. weird, like, uh, like uh, character assassination weird stuff. Just one quick sure. question. A clarifying okay. question. And Destiny. I really want to know what is your position on when it comes to self-diagnosing and like then going to a doctor. So like if you have self-diagnosed yourself with depression and then you go to the doctor and they give you something else, then what like do you uh, – because it sounds to me from what you were arguing, it sounded a lot like you were arguing that the self-diagnosis should supersede the medical diagnosis. Wait, did you or watch my video though? Or at the – no, I'm talking about what I've heard on this panel. And okay. I, I was also – okay, so – then if you so like what wh so you're just saying that it's important to self-diagnose that's it yeah that's literally what i've said i've claimed that it's what very do you mean important. by I believe, I believe very strongly i've literally already said this i just wish people would listen to me instead of fighting whatever straw man it is i think that self-diagnosis is an important process it is the process that brings many people to get the help that they need to live better lives it's true right, for but me what was the whole thing others. about the doctors and the ivory 
All Wait, right. I think it's important to criticize doctors. Also, hold on, I can talk about this. One of the things that you get told when you go to a major, um, it, to a ma any, any sort of healthcare clinic where you're getting set up with a therapist is that if your therapist, if, if things aren't working out between your therapist, because therapy, because psychotherapy is so important, it's very, very important to feel to if okay, to have the ability have to that if you don't we got we got to keep going. I mean, can I just do this? Can I please? There's, eight, there's eight people, and you're getting half the I round. So I have to I, keep well, it going. If I, I don't care. I, well, I don't care. There's no negotiating. Right. There's no Fine. negotiating. There's no negotiating. I don't know. This is not a democracy. Okay. I'm an authoritarian today. Okay. I got my little brown shirts behind me. Okay. We're throwing over to destiny. Okay. I, do you recognize, uh, is, a yes or no question. is there a difference to you between recognizing symptoms in yourself versus diagnosing yourself? I mean, I don't really think so. Those are basically the okay, same process. Okay, if you don't recognize the difference between these two I things, then I don't understand. Perfect. I don't understand why you are having or trying to have these conversations when you're ill-equipped to do so. I don't understand. How you don't recognize the difference between a are diagnosis you? of something versus recognizing symptoms. Because if you would just like couch your language a bit more responsibly, instead of using literal anti-vaxxer arguments like sometimes doctors have made mistakes and medicine can be expensive and doctors are wrong and they've made mistakes, about, instead of using literal anti-vax arguments and conflating the difference between a diagnosis versus just recognizing symptoms. Symptoms, most of what you're saying is pretty agreeable. It's pretty important that people are able to recognize their own feelings and able to recognize themselves and able to recognize things that have changed over time. That's a, probably one of the most important things when it comes to communicating even physical ailments to a doctor. But as soon as you up that to you should diagnose yourself, that is a totally different thing. Wait, going wait into it, I'm, I'm not, excuse, hold on, you've talked for 30 minutes, okay? Shut the fuck up. There's a difference between going into a doctor okay. and saying like, hey, I have I feel like I have crazy mood swings and like, I just feel like I'm not making any friends and, and but there's a huge difference between saying that versus going to be like, uh, hey, what's up? I've got a borderline personality disorder, so yeah, right? As soon as you have that diagnosis in your head, it causes all sorts of like horrible things to happen. People that have mental illness are already like cognitively distorted, such that it's hard for them to recognize their own thoughts and other people's thoughts and like what's going on exactly. There could be a lot of issues there. The idea that you would find a diagnosis, start reading the symptom list, and then like potentially maybe matching that is like mind fucking yourself in a way that you should never be doing it. If you wanna say self-identify symptoms, that is totally fine and that's super positive, but self-diagnosing with a mental illness and then going into a doctor and potentially fighting with them with over it is like the worst idea in the world what are you you're literally just inventing a person to be mad at this is so silly this is the thing that gets so can you just go on to the next so person dylan if she's gonna waste time ad humming she's already talked for over half the round just go on to another person look, look, look i did i look look i uh, look you i am limited i am doing my best okay, okay. She, don't okay. Do the this isn't a thing about direct adjustment okay if so, you, you you have to make do with the time you have that's the whole point of this right if you don't got the time then you then kind of up shit creek okay d mama i was gonna let you speak but then the fuck, okay, just, you got 20 seconds, okay? 20 seconds to respond to all that. She okay, just wasted sure, five yeah. of it. Uh, first, of all, first of all, first of all, Destiny, uh, you're you're wrong about this. There is evidence that shows that there aren't actually uh, negative, uh, particularly notable at all negative side effects of people diagnosing, going and talking to a doctor. If you go into a doctor, in fact, it's an experience I had where I said, Doctor, listen, I've been diagnosed with uh, with depression, but the depression meds aren't helping my focus issues. I think I might have ADHD. Can you screen me for ADHD? I was screened with a formal screening with ADHD. Turns out I hit basically every single one for ADHD. That was Wonderful. a, that was the process of self-diagnosis. And okay, so now moving oh, forward from this, that's moving your forward. Oh, no, I was called by Dylan. Prodigus. So moving, I, I agree with a lot of what Destiny said, that looking at yourself and being able to notice what's what's wrong with you and the, the kind of symptoms you're showing um, is extremely important when you go to a doctor. That way that doctor knows. That doctor doesn't live with you. That doctor doesn't see your everyday life. The doctor depends very much so on what you tell them feel is wrong with you, such as I, I, I'm i always tired. I can't, I can't ever, I don't ever have the energy to do anything. I'm always on the couch. I'm always on the bed. That's extremely important. But to go as far as to say, which Dean Mama has, that when doctors are the only ones that can diagnose, it leads to asylums and gatekeeping is insane. It is absolutely I'm insane that saying that it's saying that the people that have gone to school for eight years um, are not are not as well trained and as not as well uh, versed as you are. Who, when you've looked up WebMD and you've met three of the symptoms, so you automatically diagnose yourself with that. Um, there's nice many more symptoms nice, that can nice include this. She, um, let him finish doctors, the answer. Doctors, doctors have consistently consistently said do not web and yourself i've never met one doctor or never heard one doctor that has openly suggested you know what before you come see me go ahead look it up on WebMD and figure out what you what you need to do for okay. yourself before you come see me i want to okay. stand demon mama can i do it sure then we're gonna go to josie and then we're gonna go to loner and then we're gonna go to xan and we're gonna wrap up the round you know what i'm not gonna be a dick josie i haven't heard from you i'm just gonna pass off my time 
Okay, Josie. Hello, everybody. How are you? Happy to be here. Uh, so I think, um, you know, I think there is a, a mis mistaken idea of what is being said right now, because I know that if I went and broke my arm, I would go to the doctor and say, hey, I think I broke my arm. And the doctor would probably be like, yeah, you're probably right. You, probably, you know, let's take an x-ray to verify that. Um, my, my PTSD, it was also symptomatic. Um, so I was like really depressed and I started talking a lot about the Navy and started looking at my ideas. So I went to a doctor and said, hey, I think I may have these things from trauma. Can you take a look at it? And then I got diagnosed with PTSD and I have saw symptoms that I might be a little ADHD and I went to my psychologist and I'm getting a battery test to see if I have it. So I'm not self-diagnosing myself with any of those things. Even my gender dysphoria, I didn't say I'm trans. I was like, oh, no my gender. So I went and saw a gender therapist. So I think that the argument that you're trying to make, uh, dear mom, is correct. I think it's just one of the things of like the self-diagnosis and like being diagnosed officially is the issue. But I think we know ourselves and I think nobody here is going to argue that we know like the things that are going on with us. We wouldn't see a doctor unless we think something's wrong. We wouldn't see a therapist unless you think something is wrong. And sometimes those symptoms are the things that come up. So I agree. I think that a patient can understand themselves, but I don't think they should go around saying, I have ADHD without uh, without an actual diagnosis. I agree but... with you. I never said that. Mm -hmm. I never okay. said that. I'm not, I'm not saying you did. Yeah. I'm not saying okay. you did. I'm just, I'm just yeah. I'm just up, okay. I'm just... Got it. Yeah. Wonderful. We're going to go to, I think next it was Loner Box than Zan. Yeah, I just had a couple of clarifying questions, actually, because uh, I mean, when I first saw that there was what, like self-diagnosis, whatever, I, I just immediately thought like when the, when I you know when you go to the doctor and say yeah I think I'm depressed then they check and then they you know ask you about your symptoms and then you come they come back with a diagnosis and it's them who makes the decision like Dima Mama you just you actually said when you were uh, you went to a doctor and then you asked about symptoms and then you asked I think this might be ADHD can you screen for ADHD and then they said yes ADHD is that right so is yeah. that so that as far as yeah so as far as I know that's you um, like. Your, so your self-diagnosis was much less conclusive than the diagnosis of the doctor. Would that be fair? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, I never said that. that so, I've never once made the argument that self-diagnosis should be the conclusion. Of course. I've literally yeah, so said can I just, so I, I just want to follow up then. So Destiny, was your problem with the self-diagnosis thing just that like that term online in the age of like, I don't know, Tumblr and shit? Or what was the it's problem they're, with they're that just, term? They're using the words wrong. I, I, um for other purposes, I think. But like, you're not diagnosing yourself, you're just understanding your own symptoms. That's that's what you're doing. That's what you're supposed to present a doctor. You're supposed to give a doctor your symptoms, not a diagnosis. Saying that like, I'm depressed, or like, I have attention problems, maybe I have ADHD, that's fine. But there's a difference between that and like, mm -hmm. here's the diagnosis I have for myself. But people don't seem to want to understand that for some reason. Sounds like a pretty small distinction. It's not, well, no, it is it, here because now we're on a panel, but in her video, she said self-diagnosis could be the most important thing. And then she went on to make a bunch of anti-vax arguments about doctors. So that's I now like on the panel, it's more reasonable. Very nice, very nice, right, nice try. Right. Dude. So we need to throw it to Xander because we only have a minute left. Yeah, so I uh, have not followed the drama between Demon Mama and Destiny, which I'm pretty sure is what uh, kind of caused this topic to come up. So I'm just going to give my best take on on this from what I've seen, and and we'll go from there. So I'm surprised that I've seen so many people make comparisons to self-diagnosing mental health to breaking a leg or having a, a yeast infection. There's a big difference between having uh, constipation or looking down saying, well, yeah, I got a yeast infection going on there, and knowing what's going on in your head. The human brain is unbelievably uh, complicated. Right. It's Everyone has different uh, uh, chemical uh, balances uh, structure inside of the brain it's very complicated i do think and i don't think anyone here disagrees with this that um acknowledging you've got symptoms and trying to help to alleviate them while you find a, a like an actual diagnosis from a doctor is a bad thing i think what's happening here is a huge misunderstanding of terminology um and that's unfortunate but i, I think for the most part we're all on the same page okay i would argue that there's a deliberate so, attempt to so misinterpret my, my my statements if you want to if you want to say that oh the, the word is... self sorry go ahead the round is over. You'll be able to open the uh, next round. Uh, we have one more round where we're talking about this. Okay. So, I've gotten the first vote, and it's for Sprouticus. Man, they're gunning for you, Sprout. Who hate, you. Which judge hates Sprouticus every single round? Yeah, right. I'm kind of curious. Can I, can I, judge? Get some names out can I, here. Can I, can I, I kind of want to say, I'll ask him if I can say it. The first one is Sprouticus. The second one is for Connor. And the third one's for Connor. Connor, that's what you get for being ah! nice. Get the fuck out of here! Bunch of fucking you for being nice. You, you gave someone else time. Look, you helped yeah. Josie up, and, and boom. And the Listen! Sorry, that that'll, that'll teach me to be nice. You that'll fucking teach you to be a nice person, yeah. Hi, Connor. <laughs> what is it Jordan Good Peterson you, said buddy. about nice guys? 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, hey, before you eat me, Jordan uh -huh. Peterson won this round. All right. Wonderful. Bye. You have a good one. <laughs> Clean your room. It's true. Yeah. Clean your room. Clean open your room. some windows. It's true. It's good for you. Eat it. Okay, is anybody gonna get I'm waiting for my staff to eat it? But there we go. Okay. Next we have Prime Kai. And also I didn't <laughs> shout out Josie oh, at the start of the last round, so Josie's here too. Okay, we're gonna continue. Uh D Mama, you can open this round. Mental health. Wait, no, me. if she opens and everybody responds to her, she can start for 30 minutes. How is she get another opener? Dude, Dude, calm down, man. It, you, you know relax? what? Des I Destiny? haven't even got a chance to talk Destiny? to Destiny? Yeah. Destiny? Who asked? D Mama. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, I really encourage people to go actually watch my video and not just listen to whatever nonsense has been filtered through Twitter. Um, the, 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 the fact that, like, first of all, the idea that, like, saying the word self-diagnosis is somehow deeply inaccurate is just ridiculous. Like, self-diagnosis is a perfectly valid term. You could also say non-clinical diagnosis, but a self-diagnosis is naturally non-clinical unless you're a doctor. And even then, you know, there's limits to your ability to diagnose yourself. Obviously, there are varying degrees of complexity for all kinds of things that you might engage with. But I, what I said in my video, oh, the wording me. was uh, arguably self-diagnosis is the most important step. And I and I think that's it's interesting that people have ignored that in order to say that I'm some kind of like anti-vaxxer. It feels very weird. It almost feels like people have a motivated reason for why they're making these straw men about me. But whatever. Um, the fact of the matter is that self-diagnosis is incredibly, incredibly helpful and it can also help you get to a more accurate diagnosis. There's all kinds of things that you can do from from the first thing, but you need to be able to recognize these things in yourself. Also, if it's if it's somehow like bad that I said the word self-diagnosis, which I don't agree with that analysis, then I guess you should probably talk to Windows as well because they have your diagnostic tool that helps you figure out what's wrong with your computer and you're not a technician. So I guess you might want to have a word with Microsoft. As well. Okay, Sprouticus and uh, Zan and the Destiny. So um, I, I agree with you on the first part. Uh, I, I'm going to call it something different, but that's just semantics. I'm not here to argue semantics. Um, recognizing what is wrong with you in your life is very important when you're dealing with disorders, when you're dealing with what's going on. Um, recognizing your arm hurts, you fell on it, it hurts very bad. You may have broken your arm, you also may have sprained your arm. Um, those are two very different things treated in two very different ways. Um, and the doctors, and this is going to kind of close mine uh, kind of statement, is that the doctors, when you go to a doctor, they don't trust the patient. They never trust the patient when the patient walks in. Doctors will 100% verify what you say. Okay. You, can't, you don't walk in and say, I don't yeah, this, this is... happened to me, and this is, this is what's going have... on, and uh, this is what it is. The doctor <laughs> oh, will God. never trust you. Oh, they no. will always they will always take a step back. They will always do something else to verify that that is what it is before they make a diagnosis. You don't just walk into a doctor and say, yeah, I've got this, and they'll, oh, yeah, you must have that because you told me that you have that, and uh, here's your medicine. It, that I don't never think anyone happens. disagrees with this. No, I, I do. With that. So that's, that's, doctors, by the way, I do that's that, not true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, the idea is that doctors nope, don't nope, trust nope, their nope, patients. Nope, okay, nope, nope, nope. So we have a time keep. We're keeping time with track of how much people talk. So I just, we're throwing it over the Xan, the Destiny, then Prime. Okay. Yeah, so it seems like what's going on between Demon Mama and Destiny, Elephant in the Room, I know, they are not fans of each other, and, uh, you know, that's going to, to happen, but um, I want to add a little bit on to what so Hunter much said of earlier in a way that does not come shit. off as, uh, as bad faith, I guess, because that seemed to be how it's coming off. Um, I don't think what Demon Mama was saying was exactly an anti-vaxxer argument, but I have debated many times people who have made anti-science arguments, and they've made that argument that sometimes doctors are wrong. They'll bring up examples of uh, the, the way that the federal government or doctors thereof have um, have engaged in bad practices or have come to the wrong conclusion or have engaged in uh, experimentation that's been wrong, um, how mistakes are made by doctors and you have to be referred, and that is completely true. Um, and I think the problem is there there is that... Um, I'm gonna be honest, I think Destiny's got a bit of a bias against Demon Mama. I, I know, I'm gonna take issue with that. But yeah, I think that's the point Demon Mama is making. That there is the possibility of doctors being wrong, but that is often, to be fair, often used a lot by anti-science people, anti-doctor people. Um, and I've heard it many times from conservatives who've done that. And I, I understand the concern there. Okay, uh, next was, I said Zan, next I said Destiny, right? Yeah, so yeah, the, the difference between trying to, like, self-diagnose, like, an obvious physical ailment versus a mental ailment is entirely different. Like, generally, like, a cognitive distortion doesn't occur when you break your arm. Anybody can look at their arm and see if it's clearly broken. And 
it also doesn't even really work as an example because if you say that you quote unquote broke your arm, the doctor's not just going to treat it like a broken arm. You're going to get an x-ray to verify it. Now, there isn't a comparable thing like that for the brain unless you like kill somebody and chop their brain open and start like trying to like test for gray matter or something, right? Like there isn't like a, there's generally not a physical test for, for the vast majority of like things that affect the mind. Um, so uh, that's one thing. Secondly, I don't want to run around in circles on this, but I just, I don't understand why people don't understand the difference between what a diagnosis is, whether we call it a non-clinical diagnosis or a diagnosis versus understanding what a symptom is. Um, there is a difference. Like I can go to, uh, like, I might think I have like the flu or I might think I have something and I go get some like cough syrup or I, I get to go, I go get like a, something for like a fever or whatever. I'm not diagnosing myself with a particular virus. I just understand I have some symptoms and I'm trying to treat the symptoms. There is a difference between like recognizing a symptom rather than diagnosing diagnosing yourself. And when we're talking about people that might have a mental illness that might inhibit their ability to understand themselves well or understand what's going on around them well, the idea that those people are in a position to make a self-diagnosis is just not true. All you have to do is change the language to, you should be able to recognize your symptoms and whatnot, and then you should be able to go and talk to your doctor about them. Change that from, you should get a self-diagnosis first. It's the most important thing. Don't let doctors gatekeep you from getting a diagnosis. Can I ask you something real quick? Can I ask a clarification then? Are you willing I to roll gotta, back your ridiculous gotta. statements about, about me being an anti-vaxxer then now that you've completely changed your argument? So I haven't changed any of my arguments. Earlier when you said things like doctors you used have, to let you've walked back. Uh, can I walk, finish? If you're going to ask me a question, question, I'm going to respond. So if you're going to say things earlier like doctors lobotomized people in the past, there's flaws in the medical system. The earlier DSM was wrong. This is the exact same types of arguments that anti-vaxxers make or people in certain communities when they say in the past the medical system has harmed us or in the past the medical system has had problems. Saying that the medical system has had problems in the past implies that you ought not to trust the medical system today, which implies that a self-diagnosis is more valuable potentially than a diagnosis from a medical professional because in the past they weren't trustworthy. Therefore, today they might not be trustworthy. I'm sorry if you can't prime see how that disagrees, so I'm it over no, prime. Prime, Wait, Prime disagrees. I want to throw it to Prime because Prime has said nothing on the topic and he disagrees. So, give him hey, the yes. Up. So, uh, uh, Stephen and I had a long conversation last night about exactly this. Now, Stephen's actually moved me uh, closer to his opinion than I was at the start. I actually had no opinion on this previously, but he moved me uh, closer to his position. But I feel like he's doing it again of like minimizing the effect of bigotry within uh, the medical field, right? And so uh, I'd say that I, I, I don't throw out the medical field saying that like uh, minorities uh, can't trust uh, doctors and they shouldn't bother to go visit. I'm simply acknowledging that their experiences are uh, maybe different from uh, the experiences Stephen uh, may have had in the past, right? Um, that uh, when you go to uh, a, a, a medical professional, right, um, the way they treat you is dependent on their own experiences, just like anyone else, right? They are no different from the rest of the population. So they're coming in there with their um, uh, own biases, uh, their, their, um, uh, their, um, their own thoughts about like their own preconceived notions. And so uh, that affects uh, their treatment. Like this is, I'm not saying anything revolutionary here, right? It's very basic stuff. So all I wanna say is that um, in, in terms of uh, uh, people having access to medical care, they may have that access, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the treatment they'll get is sufficient. So um, I can understand a person trying to self-diagnose because they're not getting uh, the treatment they feel they deserve. However, I do think I do think that they simply shouldn't trust their own um, uh, diagnoses, right? Like, I, I feel that that should always be double checked. You, if you feel like there's a problem, if you feel that your doctor has uh, diagnosed you with something wrong, right? Well, then yes, get a second, third, fourth opinion if you have to, right? Um, until you feel that you are getting the treatment that you deserve. Um, but I don't think it's anything wrong with someone simply looking up, right? Like going to um, um, uh, going online and trying to understand what's happening within their own body and then uh, taking charge of their own health care. Um, uh, but that do does involve actually um, um, uh, interfacing the medical system. And then just uh, just uh, quickly, Sprouticus, like, yeah, you're like wrong. Hey, buddy, uh, nice to see you. But uh, you're wrong. Um, doctors, of course, rely on patients to explain their symptoms, right? You don't just come to the office, sit down, stare at them blankly, and they're like, oh, yeah, all right, I got this. No, <laughs> like, they, they take in your input. Now, you could be um, you could be experiencing something and not realize exactly what you're... I mean, it's something what Destin was saying, right? You can experience something and not actually understand what you're experiencing, and you can relate that to a doctor, but it helps them uh, guide, guide themselves. And I'm done. Go ahead. Right. So you, so you can rely... I mean, doctors can rely on what a patient says, but they never trust 100%. That's what the patient, that's what the patient means. Patients lie, and you hear this all the time in the medical medical uh community so, house. Patients good work so uh, no 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 i actually so i actually, 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 actually okay so i haven't been able okay so um 
so I actually have family members in the medical community. Patients lie. Um, and so with that being said, the doctor will never trust 100 percent when you walk in that what you say is 100 percent absolutely the truth. Um, they will always they, so they, they will always all. they will always verify afterwards that that is actually what's going on before they make a diagnosis. That's how doctors work is they take what you say and they take it and they're like, OK, so this is a suggestion. This isn't necessarily a uh, yet 100 percent the truth right here. And let's go off this suggestion first and let's move towards what we think is a medical Which diagnosis is what you and said so first before. test no I, I said the doctors never trust their patients they don't they always yeah. verify just, they always okay, verify they different don't trust. There's a things i can say here I can, uh, there's a couple of things i can say here Wait. first of all uh, once again uh in order to make in order for the people who've been uh, Outdoors really, Chelsea, though. going way above and beyond to attack my position um they have to strip literally all context and prescriptions in order to make it seem like i'm making some sort of anti-vax thing literally never said anything in my video i went to great uh great extent about the where and why and the, the issues that are there with the mental um with the me mental health um indus industry in our country with whatever and, and these are real issues that are very very um it's such a waste of fucking time oh my god she takes forever to say nothing a published uh study by kaiser permanente the i believe the biggest healthcare um, provider and, and her audio is cut out. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, so sorry. I'm gonna have to. Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. okay. we got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Am I am I okay. able to finish? Well, no. Now I gotta throw the Josie. You should have wasted so much time on the Josie, dumb personal Josie. shit. Ah, oh, sucks. Okay. Um, All right. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna bring it back to what we, this whole conversation was supposed to be about. Is there a benefit to people self-diagnosing and looking at this stuff? And what Prime Kai said is absolutely right about how people are treated differently once they go into that doctor's office. If they're black, if they're if they're uh, a woman, or if they're trans, if they're white, if they're affluent. There's so many ways that doctors listen to you. So because we have more access to knowledge and information and are able to go and be like huh i wonder what's going on with me and you're a you know minority kid in in some area where you don't have i hate this idea that every system treats minorities and like women as like these completely incapable children it's so fucking harmful they go so far with it i hate it so much it's so stupid because I know that they actually keep me focused. I do things differently on, on how I operate and work. I would not know that without access to information. I would not know to even ask a doctor if I had these symptoms at all if I didn't have that access. So the so the, the whole debate is about, is this a good thing? And overall, I think more people are seeing help than the negative. So in my so in my opinion, just for the sake of debate, yes, I think that the access to information and having people understand their symptoms be, for a healthcare system that isn't equitable is a better thing overall. Could it get better? Yes. Is there more access to healthcare needed? Yes. But I think right now we're in a good uh, we're in a good place of learning more about ourselves and our own humanity. Okay. That is we, not a we have, we have, we have one, one minute. We have we have one minute left, and two people haven't talked. So I want to give it to Hunter and Box. Okay. So. <clears throat> Dima Mama, I understand your point. I think that it's important to be able to self-diagnose. If that was all your segment was, which was on self-diagnosing, then that would probably be a very be a, a overall agreeable thing that we should be in tune with our bodies and understand our symptoms. Sure, why not? But the problem is when you are mixing that in with this long tangent about how like the medical field, the past mistakes, the gatekeeping doctors, this leads to the asylums. I know at one point you even used the word the ivory tower. Even if you are not actually anti-intellectual yourself, you are lending credence to anti-intellectualism, which is that your self-diagnosis will supersede that of a professional. Literally I literally never claim that, and I, I request that you please engage with the things that I actually said in context, and not I'm just not rip saying, things It's out. not just about what you just said, it's about the consequences the of okay. what you've said. I, okay, so now I have to throw it over the box. Because we're gonna go over a little bit. Box, wrap it up for us. I don't know. I just it. I feel like I'm lost in translation. I'm trying to think of every single time I've heard someone I know in real life mention the word self-diagnosis. It was always in the context of I've got this feeling, and self was basically like serving the same function as a word like informal or shit diagnosis. You know, just like incomplete diagnosis. Like I don't think I've ever heard someone say self-diagnosis in the context of I'm like overriding the medical profession or as even even as any general kind of attack on the medical profession. I don't understand, but I don't know. Maybe this whole conversation is just like more about pride than the arguments, but um, that's just a personal uh, informal diagnosis. Okay, so. I have the votes. So the first vote is 
for Prime. The second vote is for Box. And the last vote is for Sprouticus. So there's a three-way tie. And so what we do in situations like this is I make the decision because I want to make this a formal process. And when I look at the three people, the person who I think contributed the least to this round and did the less, so I'm sad to say, Loner Box. Love you, buddy. But, you know, it's a tough fucking world. And you know, cool. you and I know it hurts the British community because you ain't taking this one home either, okay? Sorry. Hey, I just came here to make new friends. It's all good. Good sad. luck, everyone. <clears throat> Knock them dead. See you later, buddy. Okay, bring the next person is Next topic. As we have a Latinx streamer on the stream, we're going to be talking about Cuba. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going on about Cuba. There's protests on the street. There's sanctions still placed on Cuba. And there's a big discussion about what's going on in Cuba right now and what's going on with the future of Cuba and American and Cuban relations. Uh, you may all begin. Uh, the problems going on with Cuba right now have almost nothing to do with the embargo. The embargo has been going on for decades. Um, the United States is able to export food and medical supplies to Cuba. Cuba just makes really bad macroeconomic decisions. People there that are having protests are doing it on behalf of the fact that, one, it's an authoritarian regime, believe it or not. A lot of people don't like authoritarian regimes. And two, they're having uh, problems getting access to food and shit. Their ration cards are unbelievable. And three, the uh, way that they run their economy and the way that they run like their agriculture sector is incredibly inefficient and it doesn't work. And the country just has a whole bunch of problems that are independent of anything related to the U.S. embargoes, which is what every left-leaning person wants to blame 100% of Cuba's problems on. No, it's the CIA. And that. Well, I mean, I think that's a little bit of a... I mean, I think that's a little little uncharitable towards the lefties. But, I mean, I think there's points to be said about, about the extended embargo. But I don't think there's... I, I think it's very strange that there's an attempt to sort of project uh, a lot of pr political sort of prescriptions on, uh, on a protest that's going... Like, pro... Protests happen in every country. Prot protests happen here. Like, I don't think, I think it's perfectly reasonable to assume there are people who have legitimate grievances with the Cuban government, especially given a lot of controversial things that the, that the Cuban government has done in the past. But I also think that it's, it's not fair to just completely disregard the fact that there, there has been not just a, not just an, like an embargo, arguably a blockade, um, that's been put on Cuba. And that, that is going to damage things. That's going to lead to bad living conditions. And we already know this. We've talked about this extensively with regard to um, how Trump affected um, Iran with san the sanctions in Iran just driving COVID deaths through the roof. Um, yeah, maybe these, maybe this particular protest doesn't have a direct connection to the embargo slash blockade. But I think that ignoring that would be ridiculous. And I think all of us being Americans, it's important for us to recognize that um, keeping a country, the people of a country completely choked out of world trade is going to have a lot of a, a lot of negative effects. And also, it might even encourage more authoritarian behavior, because if a country um, feels beset on all sides, if they feel like they have no allies um, that they can that they can work with whatsoever, well, they might crack down in order to hold power. I think we've seen this in numerous cases where authoritarian governments gain power by taking advantage of the uh, of the um, the external factors that are that are being imposed um, on them by whatever world power. I think this is one of those situations where ignoring that would just be out okay. of hand. Can I, can I go next? Yeah, can okay, I go next? Team. You gotta let yes, me team. go next. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Damon, Mama, I have to have a chat with you about this self-diagnosis thing long, t long later. Over. The okay, but wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. And, okay, I want to say, as someone who is from Iran, uh, I, I know that the, the economic sanctions definitely fucking hurt uh, a lot of ways, but I think it's foolish to fall into this trap of saying that it's only the economic so sanctions that have that are causing problems in any of these given places. The people of Iran absolutely fucking hate the government because it's completely corrupt. They just had an election recently where uh, they didn't let any moderates run. All of the moderates were banned from running. And I didn't hear leftists saying anything about this or or, or, you know, it's because America wasn't involved in that. So I think it's important to note that, yes, sanctions are harmful. But at the same time, the governments of these of various countries also have a role to play as well. And it's it's like it's foolish to go all the way to one side or all the way to the other side. Holy moly. Right, right. That was a lot of what, that, that was Just, that was a lot of people. OK, but a lot of people haven't talked yet. So I got to throw it over. To I would say, you know what, Sprouticus, foreign policy expert. 
Okay, so uh, the United States should go over and help the Cuban protesters. Um, the Cuban government has been dictatorial for a while now. Um, we've sat by and watched it. Uh, President, Obama, President Obama practically praised uh, Fidel Castro while he was in office. Um, so okay. we, need, we, need, we, need to go, we need to go over there. We need to um, stop this dictatorial process we're letting happen off just under 100 miles away from our shores. Um, we need to go over there. We need to help. Uh, and then after we help, after we institute a new government in Cuba and help assist them all the way through, uh, just like we did with uh, Japan after World War II. Um, we help assist them all the way through, all the way to completion. And then we, uh, while we're doing that, we lift the embargo. We start to give Cuba trade. Um, but I said, while, while Cuba is dictatorial, uh, we should not be trading with Cuba. They have picks too, Electric Boogaloo. Next, I'm going to throw it over to, uh, I'll say Josie Rose. Okay. So like any... Um, collapse of like the way governmental systems work and state government systems work it is a combination of everything right like the fact that we have when trump uh put the uh, the sanctions on cuba like just like just on just monetary alone you had the hard currency in cuba drop you had about 407 western union locations shut down airport travel all of those things happen you had covid that happened as well and you also have the failure of the regime and making sure people have basic rights and the food shortages like dr heem now talked about Iran, it is a combination of everything, like like the stability of outside foreign intervention, the ability for a country not to just trade normally and trade its goods is a complete destructive factor in making sure that civil unrest happens. And, and this is also an example, like we were talking about the CIA too, this is exactly what they want. They want governmental systems to be disruptive. They want people to be in unrest. They want these food shortages, these medical food shortages, these things so people start ripping their government apart so it's easier for them to have a regime change. Now, that may be a little conspiratorial, but the U.S. has a really high history of doing such things. It so what we have to do is... Yeah, it is a little. It is a little. Um, but but at the end there. of... Yeah, just but the thing about it is the people of Cuba are suffering. Oh, I, like I know people that li- that have family in Cuba and they are you. really shook right now. They're afraid that their elderly uh, family members aren't going to get the medical care that they need or are going to die. They're already trying to plan ways to go and see their family because they're afraid of the food shortages and the fact that disease is starting to spread because the basic economic systems in Cuba aren't working. So the things that we need to do right now is humanitarian aid. Stop this silly blockade and actually help people like we're supposed to. Cuba went all over the world trying to help prevent COVID with the best scientists in the world. They tried very hard to help with the vaccine efforts as well. And this is what we do to repay them is just to sit and watch as their country begins to unravel. And we need to do the right thing and help the Cuban citizens. Okay. Uh, I got to throw it to Destiny. Thank you. I just wanted to respond as a, to uh, as a Latinx uh, Cuban member of this panel, uh, there's just so much misinformation people talk about this. First of all, comparing the sanctions in Iran that are enforced by dozens of countries versus the U.S. embargo against Cuba, these two things are not similar to one another. One, Cuba still has the ability to buy food and humanitarian supplies from the United States. They have had for over two decades. And two, Cuba still has the ability to trade with literally the rest of the world. Um, I hate, Sorry for the ad hoc, but I think it's a little rich that lefties that say that America engages us in imperialism all the time, that America's this horrible trading partner are saying that Cuba is suffering just because they don't have access to the U.S. like markets. That's pretty funny to me. Number two, there is no blockade. I don't know why we keep saying blockade, blockade, but there's no blockade. That, that doesn't exist. Um, number three, talking about the fact that like the Cuban currency dropped, it did. But again, these are macroeconomic policies related to how the Cuban government runs its monetary system. Their ending of the dual currency system is why their currency is having so much trouble. Their inability to export goods or services to other countries because of their horrible mismanagement of their agricultural sector are not things that can be blamed on the United States. I'm sorry. And then in terms of the country cannot trade normally, the country can trade normally. They can trade normally with everybody in, the, in, everybody in the world, just not the United States. Uh, again, if you think that access to U.S. markets are so important that it's like foundational to a country surviving, that's just kind of ironic to me coming from people that say that the U.S. engages in like predatory trade practices. Okay. Uh, dear mama, uh, uh, you, mo- multiple people haven't spoken, but I'll give you like 10 to 15 seconds, okay? Yeah, I don't count. Real quick. I, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to respond before it gets too far away from something Heem said. Heem said he doesn't hear anybody say, like, uh, give fair credence to the protests in, in Cuba. I literally did in my opening statement. Wait, I said I, I have anything no... about Cuba. I didn't say uh, anything about uh, Cuba. Uh, I said... Let her finish. Let her finish. Yeah, yeah, let me just finish. What I was saying is that I think I literally said in my opening statement that I believe uh, I have no doubt. This was the wording that I used. I have no doubt that there are very legitimate grievances against the authoritarian government in Cuba. I just wanted to be clear to make sure that you okay. know that there was 30 was seconds. Just Crime. That's it. So I think that uh, leftists, I think a fair criticism that leftists often give cover 
to like communist governments, right? Like undue cover to them, um, simply because like the amount of criticism coming their way is just completely unfounded, right? So like on the other end, you kind of overcompensate, and then you, you can um, end up defending some pretty like terrible shit, right? So I don't know enough about the Cuban government to actually make a statement about exactly how they treated their uh, um, their citizens, um, but I I could believe that uh, the the rhetoric you hear in left the circles might be a little um, overwrought, right? Um, but I, of course, like I don't I can't let this go by, like sprout. Yes, buddy, I love you. You know, you're great. But what the fuck? Invade? So your answer is like, oh, there's a protest in the streets. So we invade. Should we, for that, should that uh, happen for all countries, right? Like any country where there's civil unrest, the U.S. should come in, like, and just like put a new government in. Just, but just uh, take one, you know, like we did so well with all, all the other uh, countries we've invaded, right? So yeah, we'll just like transplant that and uh, put a new country in there. Like, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's like, I mean, I guess why no one actually like um, talked about this because it was such a ridiculous topic. That why would he even, even um, uh, bother with it? But I I'll take the time because I like your sprouted kiss and this was a fucking terrible idea. All right. I mean, you can say it's a terrible idea, but it's what we did with Japan. We stayed with Japan till it was completely done, and we're actually still with Japan. We are their, we are their military, and the treaty that we have with Japan, we are their military. They, well, uh, they so, don't so get they military. Have Afghanistan, oh, Iran, Iran so Libya, like I mean, and, and no. so. Uh, <laughs> If we did, if we did that with Cuba, um, I think Cuba could turn around. Cuba could be a great nation if they had a, a sustainable government that could sustain their citizens, give their citizens natural rights. Um, and I think Cuba well, could really be. Do you think that's what they're what they're on the streets for? Right? Uh, do you think that's what the people want? That the protesters yes, the Cubans want freedom. Yes, actually, are, are, yes. are, no, 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 are for an American invasion. Now they may be uh, against their uh, uh, their country, right? They may be um, uh, saying that the regime they don't like the way that that's operating. Uh, they don't like uh, how the economy is going. But is it, do they want bombs to be falling in Havana? Is that what they were protesting for? Freedom bombs dropping on their heads. Is that what they want? Wouldn't it be good? Wouldn't it be good to know what they're advocating for? Wouldn't it be good to know what they're advocating for before you say it's the CIA run? Teamed. Sam. Teamed. 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 Yeah, so um, this is one of those surprise topics. I didn't have time to prepare for this one, but I've looked into it a little bit, so I've got I've got a bit to say. Definitely don't think the CIA is involved with this. I'm, that's pretty conspiratorial. Like, I, I don't know why that was brought up. Um, but it seems like the people protesting here are protesting for reasons that people generally tend to protest for, and that seems to be a lack of basic uh, needs that a human being needs to survive. Um, it seems like uh, Cuba's access to food and medical supplies has been waiting for a while in the coronavirus pandemic. Yo, why do I keep getting teleported outside of this dungeon? Am I clicking something wrong? What the fuck is happening? Living in poverty, not to mention uh, the pandemic also harmed tourism pretty badly. And uh, as someone from Florida, I know what it's like whenever lack of tourism ends up coming up and it really fucks up the economy. Um, it, it seems like what people are protesting for here, at least from what I can tell, isn't a change in government, but a change in living conditions, an increase in the quality of living because it is massively uh, dropped in, in the last year and a half. Two right. years. Hunter, two years. Hunter Avalon. Yep. Yeah, I was just gonna kind of back. Honestly, Xander Hall, I, I agree with you quite honestly. Um, what it seems to be happening is that it's just a protest for yeah, better living conditions. Um, this is being framed as like an anti-communist protest by some. It's not really like an anti-communist protest at the end of the day. And then yeah, it's also being framed as like a CIA op, which is just like yeah, conspiratorial and kind of laughable. When uh, yeah, it's true that America has a history of messing around with Cuba, but if you look at the way that these protests are going compared to like the Bay of Pigs or the multiple different apps and data mining that they try to do, it does not compare at all. Like there is no evidence that this is the CIA at all. But yeah, we have people lefties like Mike from PA was like pushing this this bullshit out. So yeah, well, maybe I think one day he'll so challenge the championship. I mean, I would I would would okay. I think it's so. No, I. Okay, so for the rest of this, I'm just going to repeat the rules since... Um, wait, let me just check. I don't want to be ableist. Is anybody in here have a hearing problem at all? Like a history of hearing problems? I no! Know. Then, oh, well, then uh, my favorite Latinx streamer, I'm sorry. Um, I I support you. It's Latinx times. also, thank you. Okay, wonderful. But I just want to make clear to everyone, when I'm speaking, no one else speaks. And from forward, o forward over, okay? I'm going to use my executive authority. More assuringly. Now, uh, Eris, uh, uh, I guess, ditched us. No response whatsoever. I assume she was too terrified by the contestants. So I'm going to give you all a gift. No eliminations this round. None. You all get to stay in for another 15 minutes? You're welcome. That's that's what the chief executive here can do for you. You're going to continue? 15 minutes. You can continue on the topic.
So the people yeah, in Cuba, they want I, free, they, they want freedom and liberty. I'm they want natural. Said, teamed. Sorry. Oh, thank Sprout, you. you can go after. Wow, okay. actually, wow. From now on, I'm going to raise my hand. It actually works, guys. Um, so listen, the, the, the thing is, is uh, we're people on Twitch, especially content creators. We're so people want to just comment on breaking news right away. I've refrained from commenting on this situation because I know that there's probably a whole lot of fucking, uh, nuance that I need to educate myself on before I fucking weigh in on this shit. But you have people who put in all capitals CIA involved in Cuba before they even fucking read into what is going on. And I think this is a major problem with like the over radicalization that exists on this platform in all cases, whether we're talking about medical information or the CIA that there's so many situations in which people just need to look into it a little bit more before right away jumping to the most conspiratorial position it might be a case that just perhaps there's a downside of capitalism or something that causes a certain problem but when we go right to the extreme position of like okay that's it just overthrow everything everything's fucked then it's like what is the point of even having these discussions if we're just going to go right to the from the extreme right no offense, uh, uh, Sprouticus, when it comes to immigration, to the very fucking extreme left when it comes to, oh, CIA is involved in everything. I, I hate that. And I wish that we could maybe a acknowledge that altogether and move towards a more productive conversation. Yeah, I'm more, I'm more so than these, happy to. These, Cuban, the, uh, these Cubans, like, they're okay, protesting their government. Proud, and again, again so these, these, uh, like no, no, Dylan said, literally said, just I said, said me. I said Sprout, then Demon Mom. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I didn't hear. Okay. Um, so these Cubans, they're protesting in a government. They're not allowed to protest against the government uh, in, um, this is an anti-communism, uh, Ooh. protest. Um, they were, they're asking for these human rights. They're waving American flags. Journalists are being arrested in the streets. This is hideous. This is absolutely disgusting. America needs to, America needs to take a step in, um, for the rights of the people in Cuba. And th that's, that's what needs to happen. There, there is no, I, I don't know. I don't know what Dr. Heem Dow's trying to get at. There's some kind of like middle ground to where we can just kind of blindly show support um like we did with hong kong um right so we we just blindly showed support we didn't do anything and china completely overran hong kong and decided that uh, since the virus came in that they're just going to overrun hong kong and we, we just sat there and watched it happen um and so we can't let that happen again we have to take action in cuba and we have to make sure the cuban citizens have natural rights uh can i okay. can i butt in really quick i haven't talked in a while it's a demon mama thank you um, yeah, so I think the idea of this level of interventionism is silly. The idea that we should have like sent troops on the ground to Hong Kong is uh, that would have been an international disaster. I think we can acknowledge that. To talk to uh, Dr. Heem's point, I also uh, haven't done uh, coverage on this particular event because of the same reason you mentioned, especially when it comes to international issues, protests going on in other countries. I try to be very careful with those things. I think it's very irresponsible to say that um, that everything is, is CIA or, or whatever. I can understand um, having a conversation about CIA involvement in in, uh, in in various countries. There's a real conversation to be had there. Um, in fact, I think there's a couple of videos I could cite that I think do a very good job of documenting um, the American intelligence agencies and American military's involvement in other countries. But that doesn't mean that you should just jump to that at every conclusion. First of all, it makes you miss what's actually going on. You miss key information. Um, but also, it just it just is it's just not based on anything so unless you have the evidence of it if you have a genuine argument well mail it to the intercept the intercept does this kind of stuff all the time and they'll be able to tell you what's i mean they'll be able to follow up on that much better than any streamer can uh so i do think that accusing uh people of, of it being cia and all that is very irresponsible ignores the actual state on the ground um and you know being a a, a sort of anti-state lefty uh i don't really i don't really appreciate like like people uh, the, 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 the desires and requests of, of, of people, the demands of people who are suffering being ignored in the name of just saying, oh, it's CIA. That's ridiculous. There's real grievances that are here. Now, okay. is there some room for criti critique of this? Sure. Wonderful. Okay. Now we're going to throw it over to Josie Rose. Yes, thank you. I feel like my position has been misrepresented. I did not say this is a CIA op. I said if the country fails, then we may have to worry about such things like that. But what I was talking about really was the conditions on the ground. The fact that a lot of those conditions on the ground were expediated or I guess ex I guess made worse um, was because of the, the sanctions that were put 
on Cuba where one third, one third of their of their revenue comes from remittances from Cuba. So people going to Cuba, giving family money through Cuba and all of that, like people sending money to Cuban citizens was one of the economic pillars that kept Cuba going. And I have to disagree with what Destiny said earlier about like Cuba can trade with anybody. If you were to say that to Mexico and say, hey, Mexico, you're not going to trade with America anymore. You don't think that would devastate their economy because they're so close? The fact that they are so close to us ma basically makes them a bordering nation. Uh, frankly, you can literally take a boat across the little strip of ocean. So the fact of the matter is the connections that we have with the U.S. and Cuba need to be restored and brought back to a position where we can actually have a partnership with them. And the fact is we have been saying yes to Cuba here, no to Cuba here by the coming and going administration. And that is what's caused so much in strife is that people don't know if they're going to have food for the next presidential administration if they're going to have money and and they're just had enough and they just want basic human rights and human services so ignore the cia thing the cia thing is if they collapse i did not say that this is a cia op so thank you I mean, coach. And, and to add one thing on there just a very wait, very quick wait, thing um, I gotta, we, the, gotta I, keep it go we got we got to keep it going okay. we're throwing it over to uh xander hall i don't think he's talked have you talked this topic no i haven't talk okay zan all right, yeah. So as this panel's wait, didn't uh, resident he literally Floridian talk? X, didn't he literally uh, say, actually, I haven't done much reading on this, but um, I, I just say did, and now I'm going to I think wait. there is no reason whatsoever, nor is it realistic uh, for what Sprouticus has said, to expect that America is going to invade Cuba, occupy it, and put in place a new government. There is no reason to do that whatsoever. It would be unbelievably unpopular. No, whatever president that, that did that would probably be committing uh, career suicide. That would lose them the, ele the election, possibly. Americans at this point are not in big favor of occupying other countries. Um, you can tell because of the fact that even though We've got fairly good reason to be in Afghanistan. Americans want Americans want our troops out of Afghanistan. Um, what's probably most likely is that out of an, a gesture for good PRs that will probably Dan, um, send some support. Did you lie to me? Did I lie to you? Yeah. Did you did. speak this topic? Yep. Wait, did I, I spoke last round, not on this round? No. Wow. <gasps> anyway, so we're gonna keep going. Oh, can I? Uh, can I? Oh my add god! He fucking axed him. Oh, oh no, god! I go go the next person. Uh, we're gonna oh, go okay. over to. Um, I just want to make sure everybody has time to talk to somebody who hasn't talked yet. This, this, this r topic. Now this round. See the difference there? Who hasn't talked this round? Does anybody not talk this round? Yeah, nobody's gonna fucking lie to me anymore, is, are they? Nah, nobody's gonna fucking lie to me now. Okay, I'm gonna throw it over to nobody else. Really wants to, now that who wants to talk? There we go. Okay, so. We're going to throw it over to Prime, then Demon Mama, then Destiny, then Sprout, then we'll wrap it up. So I'll say that um, when, when you're, you're talking about American interference, um, simply the thought like of discussing American interference, I think, is not crazy. Understanding the history of Cuba, understanding the history of American foreign policy, that is not crazy. However, stating it as fact that this, the protest we're seeing now, is a CIA operation, right? That's, that's plainly ridiculous. If you don't have the proof of that, I think that it is irresponsible. But simply entertaining the thought that we might have something, somewhere to do with something going on with Cuba, I think is not, you know, insane. I think, all right, sure. Um, but again, Sprouticus, I love you, right? Um, so, like, the bombs, right? Like the like the murder that you're endorsing, right? Because this is what this is what it is, right? So the Cuban government won't simply like lay down arms, like I give up, ah, it's over, right? Had a good run, boys. No, they're going to fight, and people are going to die. And this uh, my this is my problem all the time when people talk about these these invasions. To say just so like uh, um, uh, lightly, you know, oh yeah, we'll just invade, we'll just install the new government, right? Like do you. Have you missed the last 20 years of U.S. foreign policy? Have you missed all of that and how well that's gone? And just to say that, like, oh, no, we'll just install a new government. Like, I don't like how how does anyone take you seriously? I don't get that. Again, I love you, buddy. But like, what's going on? <laughs> Good question, guys. OK. Uh, who did I say next? Destiny? Me. I think you said Demon Mama. Oh, Demon Thank Mama. Okay. I don't want to answer yeah, wrong. I just so. have a small thing to add. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I just had a small thing. Like the the argument that like the that that, that minimizes the argument that minimizes the blo the uh, the uh, embargo on Cuba also fails to acknowledge that like America actually will and has placed sanctions on co companies, U.S. based companies that do any business with Cuba whatsoever. So that is something that needs to be acknowledged. I just I I don't think we should downplay the blockade. Of course, I think it's absolutely ridiculous to immediately jump to the CIA, but let's not downplay things that ha that do have huge humanitarian uh, impacts. These are people that we're talking about. Even if you disagree with their authoritarian government, which I entirely do, 
I think that we should recognize that having widespread embargoes that do involve sanctions on U.S. corporations is more than just a simple basic embargo. It's not easy to get around that. And that's clear by the, this. This is numerically obvious. OK, Destiny, you're next. Um, yeah. OK, so, yeah, uh, w the United States has sanctions on Cuba, which includes sanctioning U.S. companies doing business with Cuba, of course. Um, I, I don't know why we're restating that over and over again. That's what a sanction Thank is. You. That's what it means when you have an embargo. Um, number one. Uh, number two, it's not a blockade. I don't know why we keep calling this a blockade. It's not a blockade. There is an embargo with, between the U.S. and U.S. companies doing business in Cuba. Um, we also keep mentioning humanitarian things. The United States is one of the biggest exporters of food to Cuba. Cuba can buy food and humanitarian supplies from the United States if they want to. So they've been doing this for over 20 years. If they're running into a big crisis now, it's probably not because of the U.S. US embargo. There's probably other things going on. Uh, we can say that the United States embargo in Cuba should end. It probably should. I don't think there's a good reason to keep it up. But to say that that's like a big contributing factor to why Cuba is having problems today is just not true. Also, um, the other comment uh, somebody made earlier about how like, oh, uh, Cuba used to make a lot of money in remittances. The idea that your country is kept afloat by people going to the United States and then shipping back USD to your country to keep it afloat. Number one, it's funny that you think that that is required for the country to function. And two, Cuba also themselves rejected or turned away people from being able to deposit U.S. dollars into their own banks because they're trying to crush the black market that they've got on currency exchange there as well. So that wasn't just the U.S. sanctions. It also had to do with Cuba trying to curb their, their uh, Forex problems as well. Um, also, I will say the idea that like, I didn't say this, yeah, I did it. I was just, I was entertaining the thought is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. If there was an alt writer here saying some shit like, uh, no, I'm not saying the Jews did it, but you know, maybe like, okay, why, like, why would you even float the idea unless it's something that you're seriously oh. considering without trying to put that on people's minds? Uh, reckon, like trying to say that the CIA is involved in any of this at all, even just floating the thought is incredibly fucking offensive and incredibly fucking stupid. I don't know why you would, that, the words would even leave your mouth unless you're just trying to be an ideologue or playing into some agenda to, to push like your cutesy little lefty ideas and to downplay the struggles of the people that currently exist on that island that are protesting for very real humanitarian reasons, not involved with the CIA or your delusional Twitter fantasies. I, I think that's just, I think okay. it's a little gauche to compare a claim about the CIA, which has verifiably a matter of public information been involved in all kinds of regime change in politics in, in, in uh, the Caribbean, in South America, in, in Central America. We, this is a matter of public record. So I think it's it's a bit gauche to, compl to compare that to um, like alt writers saying that it's the Jews. Like, first of all, the CIA is an organization. Jews are a group of people like this is that's a, that's really, really over the top and hyperbolic. I hope you don't actually mean that. Um, but yeah, I do think it's irresponsible still to like make claims about that without evidence. But I don't think anybody here did that. I don't think anybody here even made a reference to that. Um, even why are we Josie talking about it? So, I mean, I don't know. Good question, <laughs> Destiny. I, don't know why I wonder where it came about. out first. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe out of your own mouth. You've, you've made a lot of. Uh, you've made a lot. Do you want to put uh, money on that right now? Do you want to bet a hundred dollars on who brought up the CIA first? Wait, what? That's right. Are Shut the fuck up. What? Sure what? I, what? I like the. Wait, I like the. I'm what? What you trying to think of response? I'm just wondering what you're asking. Okay, there's two minutes left. Who hasn't talked yet and still wants to talk? Oh. Or, okay, who wants to talk? There we go. Yeah, get in the fucking line. Okay, Sprout, <laughs> then Josie, then we'll wrap it up. Okay. So, uh, Prime talking about dropping bombs. That's not what I suggested. I suggested we go there and help the rebels uh, or the protesters, uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, and there are going to be deaths. There are going to be um, there are going to be tragedies that happen. Uh, that's what happens. That's what happens. When war happens. Um, as Thomas Jefferson quoted, uh, what saying, "The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants." Um, freedom is freedom doesn't come free. Uh, we say this all the time in the United States. I don't know why it's a surprise now that freedom doesn't come free. And that's what Cuba wants. Cuba wants freedom and to compare cuba to the middle east is a little bit disingenuous um the middle east is far different geopolitically than cuba cuba is literally an island that we don't that cuba on. is literally an island uh with isis is not present in cuba uh the the taliban is not present in cuba um it's it's far different geopolitical issues that compared to is a little bit disingenuous. good observation taliban isn't present okay, in okay, cuba wait, 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 wait. okay <laughs> yep so josie wrap us okay. up <clears throat> All right. So, so Destiny, I have to disagree with you. The fact that you say that, oh, one, one, the third most lucrative source of revenue is like government remittances and tourism and things like that. Then, and, and you're saying that helped by with the currency manipulation. So, are you agreeing with the Trump policy that caused that entire system to completely crumble? And then, with that stacked onto the pandemic completely devastated them with a few year time to be able to restructure their entire economic system to not have that and now that's on them 
Like, like these are normal people that are sitting there trying to feed their families. And you're just like, well, tough on them. They shouldn't have been relying on remittances. They shouldn't have been relying on things that are outside of their government borders. A lot of that is because of the colonialism of the of the of the of the world that put them in that position in the first place. So the fact that we didn't restructure their economic policies that or help them help them with that. I feel like there's got to be like a bingo card for like dipshit, but like colonialism. Like it's got to be like an every lefty fucking argument. It's like that was completely Trump's doing. So so I know you don't agree with that. So I just find that very interesting that that's what you pin it. And that's like it's their own fault that they take that money. OK, so. I want to say that there's a lot of outrage about that Zan kick, but let me just say, okay, I gave you all a round off, and people do not lie to Dylan Birds. You got to listen to the nuance of my words. My words are very good. They're the best words. The best. You got to listen to them carefully. I said topic, not round. That's a very specific word, isn't it? And you know what? Dylan Burns giveth and he taketh away. And Zan and his shout out, you know, talking about Vosh. I'm so sorry, Zan. <laughs> oh, what? Vosh screwed Vosh. And this is the it result of it. And it since you guys complain so much, this is going to be the deplatforming round. And what that means, instead of one person getting kicked out, three people are going to get kicked out this round. That's what happens when you disrespect the business, just like Vosh did, just like Xander did, just like the rest of you did. You want to be a little martyr, Xander Hall, you can be the martyr, okay? So the three people who were kicked out, according to judges' votes, the first one is Sprouticus. Sorry, Sprout. Judge you've been kicked out of the right. ring. The second person is Josie Rose. Sorry, Josie, you've been kicked out. And the next person is Prime K's. Sorry, Prime, you've been kicked out. Welcome to the business. What? I've been here for a I year, thought... motherfucker. Stop <laughs> the steal. Well, you know what? It was long enough to get welcomed. Goodbye. Uh, well... uh, bye. Bye-bye. Okay, we're bringing two people in. An um, intellectual heavyweight. Critically thinking veteran, my favorite to win the whole tournament, and Shark Zero, replacement for Hand of the Nugget. Thank you very much. Now, the next topic, which we have, is going to be uh, a simple one. Identity politics. Is identity politics an issue in modern How America? Has it been weaponized? Boring. Has it become something that um, is a shell of its former self, something that needs to be done away with? What do you guys think of identity politics? That's the topic. I think identity politics is an important part of our political system in terms of like how we identify ourselves, but I think that people have probably been uh, using it or wielding it in pretty destructive ways, and people are losing sight of like some important things uh, when, when we like do political analysis in the United States. Let me be more specific. So when we look at the 2020 election, um, we tried to look at a lot of things through like these racial lenses, which in some ways can be positive, but in other ways can be damaging. For instance, we tend to view like all Black Americans as having a similar U.S. experience, or all Hispanic people as having a similar U.S experience. And I think that that lens, that framing of issues has led to the Democratic Party missing out on like the d the differences in a lot of these groups of people. And I think that it's starting to harm us in terms of how we view people. So I, I guess I'm not arguing for less identity politics. I'm arguing for more identity politics. You just have to be careful like how you view these identities and how you wield them. Yeah. And I would have yeah, to say that would... like I would agree with you to the to the point that identity politics is in fact very harmful, right? Uh, it's so harmful, in fact, that what ends up happening and what has been happening on the Democrat side for, I don't know, the last 150 fucking years, right, is that the politics that they use to, to pander, right, to certain groups because of their immutable characteristics has only led to a further divisiveness uh, in the culture here in the United States, right? So, like, the idea that we should even be focused on anything that is related to immutable characteristics so far as, like, you know how government is structured and holding people responsible when they do wrong or, you know, setting up a system for, you know, entrepreneurs and business owners to be able to engage in the market freely and for people to be able to make those decisions is quite frankly kind of silly to me. Okay, so uh, I guess by CTV's argument, we're going to say that the, uh, the, the civil rights uh, movement was... Um, Apparently, identity politics gone mad. Um, I, the 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 trans and queer liberation movements are. I'm just glad that you decided to go way off topic with that. Yeah. Um, wait. I mean, I'm literally addressing exactly. Oh, you're what literally you said. just going way off topic. You just said that identity you politics. You literally just went way off topic. Keep in mind that critical thinking yes. veterans like shtick is being like as stupid as humanly possible. Right, like, excuse me. Yeehaw! Go get him, CTV. Yeah. 
That, that's yeah. right. And Hunter Avalon I, I clearly think... is just in the debate room mentality where he just can't yeah. have a thought of this more than five seconds in front of him, hey, right? So that's not surprising at all, this... is it? Hey, buddy, dude, I took a shit this uh, I, I, morning. Hey, buddy, dude, really how you doing? You doing all right tonight? Are you, <laughs> yeah. did, did you I love your hair? Critically thinking vegan. Hey, yeah, my hair's hey, actually hi. looking really nice. What's your hair look like? Is it? Are you sure? Because it looks like a mop. Looks like okay, a mop. Cool. Yeah, you want to roast yeah. my appearance, dude? I took a shit Yo, this morning. A that no, it just you looks like a mop. I wish you get a haircut. No, you know, maybe maybe get your shit set up oh, a little no. bit straighter. This is identity politics. Stop. This is identity politics. You're I you know. know. You see how destructive it is? You just made <laughs> no. my fucking point. No, don't make <laughs> me my money. No. No. no, don't make me money. Okay, so. <laughs> CDV, please finish your point. That's the, and that's entirely the point, right? Is that whenever you start identifying, you know, people by their appearance or their immutable characteristics, that's when all the whole shit fucking falls apart. Whenever we, what you, the people should be doing is focusing on the frameworks of the government, how you can set those things up. That's it, right? Don't focus on the individual characteristics of like what's immutable to each person. Set the system up in such a way to where every person has the ability, if they're willing to 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 put the work in to earn something, for them to be able to go out there and do that. Can I can okay. I jump in? I, I need to, I need to I haven't this. spoken this yet. Is... I haven't spoken yet though. I know, but I didn't even get to finish the sentence. But fine. yeah, but I like him better. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. Okay. Dylan decides. So, okay, dear mama, twenty seconds. Then they came. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The the idea that like there's no relevance of identity politics when we have a government that already regularly engages in identity politics and has. Um, there are all kinds of government policies that that um target and and unfairly treat. Um, members of our society based on their identity. As long as that exists, there will always be a need for identity-based analysis. And that is very, very important. It is key I for agree. our civil rights. Okay. Our yeah, huge civil rights movements have, have been based off of identity politics. Heemed. Identity politics is essential. Heemed. Heemed. Heemed time, let's go. All right, so I do think that in some aspects, it, it can go a little bit too far, even from the left uh, side. For example, in Oregon, a few months back, they passed the some some sort of curriculum where teachers had to re-educate themselves on how to teach math and not be white supremacist in math. Like shit like this really is not a good position to fight on. And and I think that th this does happen on the left. I see you guys rolling your eyes. I went through the entire curriculum mm -hmm. and it was fucked. Okay, yeah. they, they were literally saying that math is white supremacy or, or something crazy like that. These, in my opinion, are losing arguments. You can, the, the left side has so many better arguments that we can make on policy things that can change people's lives and improve them. However, having said that, I will say conservatives overdo it on the other side by turning everything into a fight about CRT and turning everything into immigration instead of actually – conservatives really don't propose any fucking well, You might say Republican. Sorry? Republicans, okay. Republicans don't really introduce any sort of legislation other than cutting taxes and shit-talking id poll. So obviously when that's the playbook from the conservative side, then the the, the, the liberal side also has to do something similar to, to counteract it. Overall, I think like it, it's good to have identity involved in politics, but we got to just keep Keep in mind uh, exactly like how we allocate our time or energy when it comes to various issues. Yeah, because it's not like that the identity of the person doesn't matter because, in fact, it does matter, right, specifically to the individual and the communities that they are a part of, right? But whenever it comes to making policy, if you tailored the policy specific to one group, what is going to happen overall is that there is going to be another group that is not getting the same type of benefit and ends up be, being disadvantaged because of the system in which you're trying to Listen, set up some, one group up with this one thing. Do, sometimes you have to do that, though, right? Like, if, an, if one group is unfairly disadvantaged, then you have to address that. You can't just only address uh, – you can't no, I would say solution. I, what yeah, I'm saying is, like – equity. I yeah, would say for a time, right. Right. Uh, for a time, right? So then, yeah. like, they... we got to wrap up this engagement because we want to get Shark in here. He hasn't talked sure. yet. Sure. So I think identity is actually extremely important. Like all throughout our, the history of this country, identity has played a part in like some part of discrimination between uh, discrimination or advantage for like some group of people. We want to make sure that we get like an even playing field uh, w when it comes to that. And even to like critically thinking v uh, vegans point, I mean, if we want to get to a point where we have the ability to just look at people and be like, hey, we're fine. We're all on the same page. We don't have like um, these like horrible um, uh, dis uh, discriminatory, uh, discriminatory histories throughout like um, uh, like 
our upbringing and everything, we need to make sure that we tailor some policy to help some groups that have been disadvantaged. I'm sorry, if a problem started out as a race problem specifically, it has to be fixed through a race problem. We need yeah. to understand the sort of intersectionality uh, of, yeah. the, of that problem to even be able to tackle it. I'm sorry, just throwing a bunch of money at a community, some being extremely impoverished because of a, um, a policy that hurt them because of their identity um, and... Um, other ones that didn't uh, that didn't have to go through that. I'm sorry, you still have the same problem. Just people have just like a little bit more money. Um, but I, th those people do not are, are will not be brought up equally. Can I ask you a question? And just the, do you think that it ever goes too far, Shark? Oh, obviously it goes too far. Everything goes okay. too far. Okay, okay I cool. like I, I had two slushies yeah. today. That's going too far. No, that happens. For real. That's fine. Sometimes, sometimes I feel, and I even fall into this sometimes too. I feel like because we're know, progressive, we feel like we need to back every fucking identity politics uh, thing that's out there, and we can't. And sometimes to the point where we like avoid actual critique to uh, just back into our side that because we don't want conservatives to win. Do you do you guys agree? Well, I mean. That? No, I mean like I, that. No, that happens some, sometimes, I'm sure. That, but I okay. want to. Yeah, it's it's that's on. okay. It happened with well, ACAB and defund the police. It costs seats in the house. Yes. Can I uh, can I uh, touch on on this particular issue real quick, Um So like, sure, I, I after. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there's there's definitely some situations where like, I mean, I I'm no fan of the like Robin D'Angelo school of of approaching race, but a lot of people aren't. There's a lot of critique on that. The idea, though, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to see more about this story about Oregon, but the idea that there aren't situations where uh, like co uh, concepts of white supremacy are built into our school systems is not true. This has been well, well, well documented. Standardized testing, for example, has had issues with um, like regional vocab being severely discriminated against. Certain um, words are not taught, certain uh, concepts are not taught in certain areas. And then when you go to have a federally standardized test, it puts people at a certain disadvantage. And this can be cultural. This can be it can even fall along racial lines based on where you uh, what where your racial group falls it with with regard to um, or your identity group falls with regard to um, economic outcome. So uh, it, it's it's I don't think these things should be dismissed out of hand. Maybe this particular issue in Oregon is ridiculous. I, I've I have, literally not heard this okay. one. But can I just? Can I, I just? I know. Can I just? Pretty sure examples. I know which wait, one that is. Wait, wait. I said Hunter next. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure. Now I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure with the math thing in Oregon, what that was was actually a handbook on not how math itself is white supremacist, but rather about how some ways that math is taught can leave out other. Am I wrong? Yeah. Okay. So if you, okay. Learn, Did if you I, say wait, anything? If, I, if I'm wrong, I'll t I'll take the L there. I don't want to spread. Him, I literally about. read through like half of this book on stream. Like, which is just real quick yeah, before people want to argue this. Yeah, Him is absolutely right. Like, it's basically it's saying things like you know, black students might not have the head to do numbers, exactly. so they should run around yeah, the classroom exactly. to learn math. It was really I, bad. It was really I have a cringe. Whole YouTube okay. video. Okay. I maybe have a, maybe it was something video. else. Can I, just I was. Plug myself? I have a whole YouTube video where I went over this in depth. Unfortunately, it's called Prager U. Uh, progressive agrees with Prager U, and like I, I was in disbelief that I had to agree with with them saying that like this is ridiculous to say that this is white supremacist. It was insane. Okay, wait, wait, one second, one second. I'm gonna well, for a second. Okay, but can people please stop? Okay, I Zan was kicked. There's not a reason to say well Zan stood with me while I was in the ward. Okay, I don't think that's smart stuff to talk about in chat right now. And I want you all to please consider the type of things you're saying in chat right now. Okay, wait, what? I, my state. Oh no. Chat chatters are great. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna throw it over. I can send a few members of the pack over there as moderators if you like. You know what? I think giving conservatives uh, institutional power is the smart way to do this. So maybe, maybe. Uh, we're gonna give it over to uh, Shark Zero again. Okay, so. <clears throat> It, if, if your contention is that like sometimes identity politics is used as a, as a cudgel and that's bad, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think that we was all the prompt. Yeah, I, yeah, I think we, yeah, we, yeah, we all agree with that. That's fine. That's fine. That's great. The, the we all agree with I don't think agrees. Well, I, I don't. No, no, I, I just. You were shaking your head, kind of. Well, it, no, no, it, no, I was, I was. She makes a lot of head movements. Like sorry, that. it's for a dramatic effect. It can be used as a cudgel. I don't want my identity used as a cudgel. All right. Nobody, nobody wants that. Um, sometimes these things go way too far. But when it comes to like identity politics in and of itself, that's very important. And if someone ever feels disadvantaged because a group that is like disadvantaged in the past is now like getting some recompense for that in the future, instead of like not doing that, what we need to do is like educate people more that just because you aren't getting this help, it's because the, the your people weren't like hurt in the past that doesn't you are not being punished you're just not getting this help because you weren't the one who was hurt 
or maybe we set a time for the expiration of it, right? Like, because if you just leave it unended, right, then at some point there's going to be people that were getting a benefit and go, well, why aren't we getting the benefit now? Well, and that's entirely yeah, situation you do when you do that, right? The problem no, I'm just there's telling you that that's a situation that you're going people. to run into that whenever you start that's, doing that for people, for groups of people, right? As soon as you prop one yeah, group up over another, right, there's stopped. going to be a point whenever, like, this group of people that's being, being propped up for a, for a while, right, is going to say, hey, why aren't we getting this benefit anymore, right? If you don't set the expiration date for whatever help it is that you're going to get from the start, you're going to end up with that dynamic, and then there's going to be fucking controversy no. and conflict. Is, well, that's, is, that's, that's oh, and, Which stand-up comedian had that? It was either Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle. It was like, I don't believe in affirmative action, but if a white guy gets the same grade as me, fuck him. Who was it? Out of fucking high school, oh, right? I know. But like, yeah, that's the reality of the situation. You roast me, buddy. Right, Come on. Okay. Yeah, you're so sorry. I, I, I really, really don't think we're that far, we're that far accent, away. Buddy. My we're, grandma was born in a place where she literally couldn't vote because she was black. I mean, like, I mean, come on. Right, yeah, but she can vote now, and so can you, right? So that's right. That that shows progress over time, that, right? So that doesn't mean that just because done. your grandmama couldn't vote that somehow you're supposed to be getting a fucking benefit now because of that. Like you did not have to go through the same things that your grandmother went through. Okay, My family right. still suffers from the same problem. If that's true, wait a second. Wait, wait. If that's true, okay. and you want to have okay, yeah, you go on. Okay, then does if it's true. And then you want to say that there's like some expiration, then they, shouldn't that be based on something that you actually have? Shouldn't that be based on actual research that says, hey, yeah, this issue has been solved or we have put in a way that this will be solved by a certain time. And if it's not, we'll extend it. But you're just mm -hmm. saying. Well, the problem that with that is, is that any time any help that you would put in comes down to the individual speaking. level. And if the individuals don't actually choose to, to prop themselves up or to take advantage of what's there, then there's not ever going to be an ending point to it because it depends on the individual, okay. which is exactly okay. why you would want to set a time limit to when this thing so, is going to expire i recognize i recognize that you you, you're you very, should very, recognize very angry that you can't you can't just say <laughs> oh that, I, that like you're a young person or whatever like you have disrespected to our other panel uh panelists here but you know what I i'm sorry I was i did i come in as the critically nice veteran no i'm here to speak the fucking well, truth right okay, well you know what remember look, look look the truth is hurting me right now the truth hurts and i gotta throw it over <laughs> to destiny at the moment all right I think identity is important, but I think we should take like a it, we need to take a greater intersectional approach to identity rather than this extremely segregated view that we have of identity. Um, like the idea that like one particular type of identity alone entitles you to some sort of assistance or welfare, I think is kind of damaging. And I can understand why people like CTV would get a little bit irritated by it. Um, two personal examples I can think of when I went to apply for student aid, I walked into that fucking office of the most Cuban motherfucker in the world. I had my Mexican sombrero on, whatever the fuck started, I think of, and I signed up for all the fucking uh, financial aid that was available to Hispanic students and I got some for it. I don't have a lived Hispanic experience. I mean, arguably I have like a, a, an ethnic background, I guess, through my mom's side for it. But like, is it really fair that somebody like me would get that type of assistance? Or for like, I went to a really nice high school growing up and I, there were black students who went to that really nice high school. And like one of these motherfuckers literally went to uh, Harvard afterwards. Like he tested into it. It was insane. Like is a student like that, is a black student like that entitled to like greater levels of compensation than like a really poor white student that grows up on like an actual fucking trailer park? Like, I don't know. I think that maybe a more intersectional framework is like appropriate there. I know people personally that are like very far descendants of American Indian tribes and they literally get like checks like every month through like um, different types of government programs like just because of like long standing treaties and agreements, you know? And again, not to say that these should be taken away, but like I think maybe sometimes it's good to have a more intersectional approach where we don't just look at one type of identity and then start tailoring our policies to that, which I don't think Policy. anybody here has precisely advocated for. But like it's just something I think we should keep in mind. Yeah, I, yeah, mean, I, I yeah. mean, I don't oh, disagree with you on that. I, I don't disagree with the idea that like intersectionality is really important. Um, I just think that I think that it's a little bit disingenuous to point to like single instances of somebody finding a loophole or finding a way to qualify for something. Yeah, as, why like, bring the nuance into a conversation at all, right? God, is this is that is this really it? Are you that afraid of me being able to talk? Afraid? To you? I, look, you kidding. talk and then you just keep rambling, right? At some point, there should is be like projection? some sentences formed. Yeah, we got it. So, okay, uh, you mama. Again, once again, uh, CTV has not made any actual like claims. He's just just his feeling. I he know. Like We're it. not listening either. It's so ridiculous. But the fact of the matter is, yeah, of course, of course, we should have an intersectional analysis. There's a reason why we why why intersectionality has become such a dominant uh, understanding of soci of sociological interactions. Intersectionality is super important. Now, I think I'm somebody who advocates for much more uh investment in 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 uh, from the federal government and from state governments in numerous minority groups and and i don't even mean not just like uh like racial or gender minorities but even economic minorities 
um, or economic majorities who suffer because of their economic because their economic status falling into major majority is so low that they can't actually get access to the things that they need. These things are super super important, and I I I, I, I say I agree with Destiny on this. The intersectionality is super important. I will say though, I don't think that it's fair or just to point at a single example of a certain system failing and 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 saying that that categorizes our approach to identity at all. We have a ton of 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 still remaining. Um, discriminatory practices in this country um, that do a lot of damage. I mean, redlining still functionally exists in some places because of the way that the laws have been written. There's ways around it. And I think that that's uh, really bad. Um, so yeah, maybe there's some situations where there's going to be false positives, but those should be seen as, hey, congratulations. You managed to get the thing that you wanted. Maybe you didn't need okay. it as much. We we're going to improve as time goes. We'll wrap it up. Shark, and then we're going to go to the next round because we are we ran out of time. Sure. Like, um, when... When you implement some of these policies, like I, I just want to say, absolutely, you should have a, like an intersectional approach. That's why I I support things like like a un, like a universal healthcare, like uh, all of these things that are just completely just help everyone. Period, no matter who you are. Um, but while you have those policies and you should implement them and we should be pushing for them, also having some more specific tailored policies that help people is also really good. Having like tuition free college is good, but also like spending on like um, historically black, black colleges is also good. When you implement some of these policies, I mean, sometimes there are some people who may not deserve to be helped by it who who will still be like helped by it you know me personally i think that voting is a fundamental human right and everyone should be able to vote whether you're in the country out of the country if you're a citizen of america you should be able to vote in american elections just like period does that mean like racist racist rapist like whatever whoever is going to be able to vote sure but does that mean like some people who are in, in sitting in jail right now for carrying an ounce of weed are going to be able to vote yes those are the people that i care about Sometimes those sometimes those things are just going to happen. And I think it, it's more like fringe cases um, than than like the actual rule when when we implement some of these policies. I really don't think like dro droves of all of these like soup, like super rich, like one one fifty third like Hispanic people are um, uh, benefiting at, at the detriment of like so many other people. But okay. but still, I mean, yeah, we should we Bring should always up. have like intersectionality. Okay. Bring me the votes. Bring me to the votes. Oh, boy. Wow, that's very. Uh, yes, wow. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah, wow, really? That might mess up my uh, my relationship with uh, wow. with a big section of my uh, my Iranian community. I'm sorry, Heemed. You've been kicked out. One vote was for Hunter, two for Heemed. Bye, everyone. I'm Bye, sorry. Buddy. That one by a close one. All Take right, care, bud. Okay. Heemed out. Love you, brother. Peace. Wonderful. Who knew the U.S. So, sanctions were so far-reaching? Jesus. Fuck, man, that was <laughs> they, hate, they really do hate immigrants, these Americans. All right, peace. <laughs> See you later, buddy. See you, buddy. By the way, everybody do support Heemed. Uh, he's one of my favorite uh, rising stars, and I'm going to do a podcast with the man. So that's going to be great. Uh, he, he's outstanding. He's outstanding. So we're going to go to the next round. This round, we're going to talk about something a little different. Do we get Bat bathroom Jamie. breaks on this show? Do you get bathroom breaks? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Go get a, Go use the bathroom. Do you feel like you need you to ask like permission? Well, am I going to get in trouble? That sounds I just like did it. I, just I literally just did it. Okay. Okay. I, just, I don't want to get Xander okay. or anything, okay? okay. I mean, as long yeah. as you can still hear, I mean, you... The fear, oh. Look, that's another good God-fearing American. I love that. Go use the bathroom. Okay, so this topic is going to be about fat shaming. And whether it's helpful, hurtful, well, what's the impacts of this? So, um, I leave it open to the crowd. Yeah, I can take this one. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, fat shaming is not effective. It doesn't work. Diet shaming doesn't work. This has been shown over and over and over again. It doesn't do anything. Um, in fact, uh, the bullying that can come from fat shaming can actually, if somebody has like something like an emotional eating disorder, can actually make it worse. It can make it harder for them mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to get the treatment that they need or get the, get the, uh, the, the healthcare prescriptions that they need. We have a very bad relationship here in America with, uh, with weight. Um, and it doesn't actually uh, match up with the actual outcomes of, of people's health. Yes, can obesity have negative effects on your health? Absolutely, of course it can. Um, but that's between you and your doctor. And people are obese for many different reasons. And people who are obese sometimes die from different things that have nothing to do with their obesity. However, it is also a 
widely documented phenomenon that fat people get worse treatment from med from uh, doctors. They are less likely to be uh, believed about their symptoms. They are less likely to be listened to about their symptoms. They are less likely to get correct diagnoses very frequently in America. Once again, this has been well researched. Obviously, can't cite every study on, on a Wait, panel what, like what this. The fuck but just come back this to? has been well researched that people who um are who are fat are much less likely to get an accurate diagnosis because of the in, deeply ingrained anti-fat biases that are in our uh, medical system. So yes, fat shaming is terrible. It doesn't work. It doesn't help anybody. And it's usually based on completely inaccurate uh, assumptions about somebody's Okay. So how would you define- Wait, wait, one second. Chad, I just want to let you know, you can't vote to kick me and that's very mean. I've been nothing but nice to all my guests tonight. I've been grateful to give them this platform. They should be grateful. Wonderful, I, okay. I Continue CTV. Them. Thank yeah. you, Hunter. Yeah, so like I guess maybe the the question to start off here with this particular question. I don't know who this person is, some dipshit in Demon Mama's chat. Destiny went to a bougie private Catholic school in Omaha for training out rapists and assholes. I don't know what they mean by training out rapists and assholes. My school was pretty bougie, but I worked all four years of my high school. You can ask find Kyle in Twitch chat or whatever. I did work study to pay for my education for every single year that I was there. So fuck you. Maybe don't drink that fucking Mountain Dew, right? I've had people tell me that too, right? Hey, don't drink that Mountain Dew, man. You know, drink some more water. You know, like those types of behaviors and stuff I think is, is a good thing to have. And, I, and that's where like I, the question comes, how would you define fat shaming? I think usually when people say fat shaming, they're referring to like bullying on the basis of your weight, literally shaming you. So if you were oh, like- Kind of like I was hey, doing with your hair a minute ago? Yeah, you were hair shaming me and it hurt my feelings yeah, yeah. greatly. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Get if you were like- if you were like, hey, you might not want to drink that Mountain Dew because water is going to lead to a much better hydration, that's fine. But fat shaming would be, hey, you're really fat. Why don't you put down the fucking Mountain Dew and pick up a water bottle? That would probably be fat shaming. So it's not. There are other anything. forms of fat. Oh, sorry. I didn't well, mean to Well, of course. Yeah, no, no, there are, of course. I was just giving a very yeah, there are other reductionist forms. example. Uh yeah, I wanted to give a, a, a quick citation for this because this is something I've talked about and researched quite a bit. Um, uh, when when American media was uh, was finally broadcast in Fiji, um, there was a, a an almost immediate spike in eating disorders, a country that had surprisingly low um, rates of eating disorders. And this is because it is normalized in American media to not just make fun of, but to imply that that just because somebody is fat, that their the quality of their character is bad. This is endemic. We see this all over the place from our from our magazines to our. Uh, to, to just daily conversation to things like massive, even online, massive things like fat people hate, um, which is like a subreddit that is devoted to just making fun of fat people um, and not not ever saying anything substantial. It's not like this is not somebody like talking to their friend and saying, hey, I'm really worried about your health. Here's some things. Maybe you should consider talking to a doctor. Instead, it's people just assuming that somebody that just because somebody is fat, that it means that they're unhealthy in every way, that they're a bad person, that they lack self-control or all these things, which is simply not true. It doesn't. Are you reality. referencing like random people on the Internet? What? I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm asking I'm, who you're referencing there. Large, or... large, excuse me. Right, yeah, yeah, because that's that's why I'm trying to get specific asking... about the particular people that you're referencing. Are you referencing like a random people on the internet, or are you referencing like people a part of your specific friend group? I'm sorry. If you didn't listen to my last segment, I'm oh, really no, sorry. Oh, no, I'm that. listening. The reason why I'm asking the fucking clarifying okay. question is because you weren't clear, right? So that's, why, that's where a clarifying question Bingo. comes in, right? Bingo! Bingo. Bingo. Exactly, Chat. right. So, hey, we've been waiting for how question, long it's going to take for this guy to blow his top. Right? I get to go yep. take a bong hit. Thanks, okay. buddy. I wish you would. Right? So, okay. clarifying so question. Can I right? What I was saying? Can I can I finish what I was saying first? Because I, I, I wish I, you would well, clarify well, okay, okay. the fucking question. I gave multiple examples of societal phenomenons that that represent this, including a study that, that was done on an, on another nation when American uh, media was introduced there. Um, there's an, an, an abundance. Are you referencing of random people on the, on the internet or no. people a part of your Dude, personal you friend group? Are you listening? I am. You haven't answered the fucking question. Okay, um, I'm going to say it again. The I, I've ju I've just referenced a study that was done on American media. This is not random people on the internet. Although there American are American media large... sounds like random people on the internet. Oh my God, are you are you okay? Do you need to go I take? Are a you nap? okay? Like this is this is really <laughs> really. Fuck, slow. I mean... oh, let's let's all calm down. Let's all calm down. We're a class. We're a group of classy individuals who all love each other, right? We're all classy to be. individuals. So we're I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this over the shark. And Destiny, you haven't said anything. So Destiny seems well. He raised his hand first, so I yeah. guess Destiny. Okay, so 
fat shaming and bullying people over their weight, it's like beating your children. It just doesn't work. It doesn't produce the outcomes that we want, so we probably shouldn't do it. It doesn't make any sense. Um, if, you're, if your goal is to get people to healthier weights, um, I just think sometimes we probably need to try to strike a balance. Like when we talk about like fat people hate, this sub has been banned for like six or seven years now. It's been it, like, I think in general, our society is moving in a better direction in terms of not bullying fat people. Uh, but I think we need to be very careful that we don't go too far uh, to the other end. I know that health at every size used to be a much bigger phenomenon. And thankfully, it seems like that's been curbed. But at least like anecdotally on Twitter, I see a lot of people tweet things like, well, skinny people are unhealthy too. And just because you're really fat doesn't necessarily mean that you're unhealthy in every way. No. No, but like it is a bad thing and we should probably deal with it uh, but the more appropriate conversation should probably happen at like policy levels where it's like hey maybe we need more bike lanes in cities or hey maybe a tax on sugar isn't the worst idea those are healthier conversations than just telling people like hey eat less super interesting uh, i wonder how i wonder how current destiny would feel about uh, past internet destiny's uh, take about uh, what was it that you said uh, make sure that you don't laugh so hard that you have a heart attack and then you uh, linked a study at me uh, about yeah, so obesity, when you're obese, yeah, so when you're obese, you're at a much higher risk for things yeah, like cardiac like disease. So might kind of be two facing here. Wait, 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 wait. I'll, 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 I'll moderate this interaction. T Mama, so, so it's about a tweet that Destiny put out, which said what exactly? Uh, specifically about me, uh, which said, uh, "Don't laugh so hard that you have a heart attack," and then uh, linked to a study that said that uh, that was titled uh, about the link between obesity and heart and heart attacks. Uh, interestingly, you know, if you had actually read the study, you would find out that um, the, the the correlation is much more complicated, and it wasn't actually saying that. But I just find it interesting that you'd pontificate so uh, so gracefully about that, but you engage in this sort of thing all the time. Uh, yeah, so when people attack me, I usually attack it back. Um, that's not like a policy prescription for how we solve obesity. Uh, just like when I tell people on Twitter that they're mentally ill and they should log off, that doesn't mean that that should be our society-wide solution for fixing mentally ill people. Uh, that These hey, are two entirely... Uh, excuse me, I'm what talking. You? Thank you. Thank you, I'm talking. I, uh, I let, uh, let DMama have some period to clarify. I want to give Destiny time to clarify. Yeah, thank you. There. Also, number two, that was a genuine concern for your health. Um, you make good fodder mm -hmm. for my stream, oh, and I genuinely enjoy reacting to like your substantial estate. Uh, I want you to stay alive for as long as possible and you being like massively overweight and smoking are two really huge risk factors for uh, different Thanks, types of heart man. disease so I was just linking you a study uh, I can link you like a million more that highly correlates being massively overweight and smoking and heart disease and I'm like a, a, ex excuse me I'm just trying to finish also I'm being incredibly supportive here okay I just want you to be healthy I was just linking you a study showing you that you engage in a lot of unhealthy behavior some of which you demonstrate on stream actively to your audience like when you smoke constantly and uh, yeah I'm just wishing That's you the cool. best yeah, true. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, super, super believable. Very honest. Thank you. Shark Zero. Sure. So being obese is bad. Being being fat is bad. It's just like a bad, it's just bad for your health, typically. Now, mm, like things like- I don't know like, that I would you, agree with that. You, okay. I mean, like, sure. I mean, but I mean, sumo wrestlers are fucking huge. They weigh this, the, the same amount as like a Honda, like a motorcycle, but they work out a lot. Most people who are typically that size don't work out that much. That being said, uh, it's that's not even it, right? Like the fact of the matter is, right, is that some people don't actually have a choice, which, it, <laughs> right? So that's kind of what Demon even, Mama. I, that's kind of what Demon Mama. That's I, I very get rare. Right. That's very rare. It's, it is rare, right? But I think that's more the point of what Demon Mama is saying, right? So to 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 just blanketly say that being fat is bad is to say that every single fat person out there, right? So like, I, I'm just maybe just asking for a little bit more clarification, right? In the terms in which you're referencing this thing, because like there are some people that actually genuinely might have a thyroid problem or et cetera that is controlling that. And they okay, actually okay, have okay. zero. I, 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 didn't, I didn't even, we understand I didn't even the get question. there yet. We understand the question. Shark, you can continue and then respond to the question if you want. Sure. Like once again, I would say being like being inordinately uh, overweight to the point where most I, I would assume like most doctors would would say that you're obese is typically bad for your health generally now once again bullying someone for it shaming someone for it trying to make someone feel bad for it does not help them it only makes them feel worse it only makes their condition worse you can have a thyroid problem you could have a lot of, you can have a lot of physical problems uh, that could lead that could lead you to putting on more weight depression can do that anxiety can do that like breaking like a lo losing um like breaking a leg losing um your girlfriend can do that that doesn't mean you're a bad person and i think a lot of people still like associate you being you being fat with you being like bad, like mentally like a bad person like you're like uh, untrustworthy you can't like hold you know you you can't hold 
like uh, good relationships, like lots of things uh, come along with that. And, you know, we've we've moved in a good direction, but there's still a lot of problems that um that that arise. Fat shaming just makes all of those problems worse. If you really want to help people who are overweight, you can talk to them specifically and we can do a lot of things like, I mean, bike lanes, that's good. I'm not sure if um, sin taxes is te- is necessarily something that that works like too, too, too much. But I'd have to look in the research of that. But still, like shaming someone for that is horrible it makes them feel bad it makes society worse and i and i think like no matter no matter really who you are um like making someone try to feel bad about that um even if you even if you stick on like hey bud listen look um look i mean here's a study like at the end after you come out pretty uh guns blazing about it can it still perpetuates that sort of system that makes people that, that lead uh, that goes into fat shaming fat well, that's the right that yeah, seems directed totally... that seemed direct was that directed at destiny or demon mama the end seems like directed at Destiny. Sure. Okay, so Destiny, then Demon Mama. Okay. okay, yeah, so just a couple quick things. Even if we say that it's like, well, it's not that they're fat for a bad reason, it's thyroid problems, that's still bad. You want to correct that. Just being overweight, period, even if you work out, even if you have a healthy diet, even if you do a list of things, being overweight, period, can be like a higher causal factor for things like having high blood sugar, um, for having like insulin resistance problems, for having like visceral fat between your organs and your stomach that causes problems. Like it's just, it can cause heart issues, like just being overweight, period, even if all else is equal. Being fat in and of itself is t- is typically an unhealthy thing. Um, That's and, true. And then even earlier for like the example of like sumo wrestlers. Well, I'm glad you clarified unhealthy <laughs> versus bad because bad is subjective. Okay, I'm sorry. Unhealthy. I'll be more clear. Um, I think that's actually helpful. You're right. Unhealthy, not bad, because people think they're bad people. Sometimes when they're fat, which isn't necessarily. There we go. Um, unhealthy. Um, also, w- like when we talk about like elite athletes, usually athletes that are elite oftentimes have a lot of health problems. When you reach the upper echelon of like that sort of athletic activity, you usually move into the realm of starting to engage in behaviors that are unhealthy. For instance, running is really good for you. It can have a lot of positive effects, but marathon runners will oftentimes have like negative effects depending on how much they, uh, you know, run marathons. For example, sumo wrestlers were brought up earlier, their lifespan, they live to be like 60 to 65 years old, which is like 20 years underneath the median of like the Japanese like male lifespan, it's insane. Dry so, nipples you know, is a real thing for marathoners. Yeah, so we can see here that uh, that Destiny, when called out, uh, just literally uh, ignores the fact that he opened the statement by saying that s- fat shaming doesn't help, and then openly admits that he engages in fat shaming. Also, it's very ironic that he also took a pretty pretty stern position on self-diagnosis before, but he's perfectly fine with diagnosing people over the internet with whatever the hell he thinks he wants. Um, that's that's a pretty strange and obvious hypocrisy to me. But I, you know, I I expect that he'll continue brushing it under the rug. Um, you know, I think that uh, fat shaming doesn't work. Uh, you don't know anything about a person. Like Shark brought up, there are all kinds of things that can lead to that. And guess what? Even if you're struggling with it or working on changing it or whatever, or even if you're not, that doesn't make you a bad person. And it also doesn't mean that fat shaming works. We know it doesn't work. So then why would anybody do it? Why Very you, odd. It doesn't help anybody. If you think that was a recall to me. If you think that fat shaming okay. doesn't work, it doesn't help people, why are you under the impression that I'm trying to help you? You said that. And you also, which is a direct contradiction to what you said at the I beginning. I was just pointing, well, wait, 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 so what is it? Do you think I was trying sorry, to help you or do you think I wasn't trying to help you? Asked you? Asked you, asked me, you asked me a question. You asked me a question. I think you're a liar. I think you're a dishonest hypocrite. That's okay, well, I that's think. great. So then if you think I wasn't trying to, if you think, if you think. I'm not finished. You asked me a question, I'm giving the answer. You want the answer or not? Are you Okay, okay, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, we've got time for it. Demon Mama, respond to Destiny, then Destiny, then I'll throw it to Hunter to close this out. Yeah, so remember that Destiny opened this segment by saying that fat shaming doesn't work. Then when confronted with the fact that he does engage in fat shaming, that he has done it many, many times, he did it very recently, inc- literally targeted at me, um, which he hand waves with saying, oh, I fired first, which, oh, sure, go look into it if you could, if you didn't delete all his tweets. You can't. So let's just take my word for it. I didn't fire first. Um, and uh, but But even if I had, would that make it right or would that make Destiny still a hypocrite? Well, it does. And this is the problem that's wrong that, that's up with fat shaming. Fat shaming is a way of hurting people that doesn't actually help their outcomes. When Destiny says, I was just trying to help you, buddy, we know he's lying. Everybody here knows that he's lying. The entire audience should know that he's lying and that he's a hypocrite. So, yeah, I rest my case. All right. So, firstly, I'm going to come clean here, okay? Demon Mama caught me. I was, in fact... Uh, I was in fact just making fun of her on Twitter. Okay. Now I know it sounds like when I said earlier that I was actually genuinely concerned for her health, and that's why I linked to her study and I called her out on Twitter. But you know what? I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. She caught me there. I was actually just bullying her on Twitter. Uh, moving past that, when we talk about prescriptions for how to help society, 
your personal actions and you like messing with somebody on Twitter or you bullying somebody or you attacking somebody is not necessarily the same as what a societal prescription for a problem ought to be. For instance, I think that spending- Don't like, you believe in leaving by your values? Uh, uh, excuse me, I'm trying to talk right now. Uh, for instance, beating somebody after like a one or two hour game of League of Legends probably isn't good for their mental health. Me saying that people should take care of their mental health and not do things that makes them miserable doesn't mean that I may, uh, I don't believe that because I also like play long games of League of Legends. So yeah, when people do things like height shame me and stuff on Twitter to their audience or engage in other types of attacks against me, yeah, I'll probably attack back. But that doesn't mean that I think it is like the societally best way to like fix fat problems or fix obesity problems in this country. When I get on Twitter, my goal is not to fix fat or obese problems in the country. Usually my goal is to just uh, give somebody a, a, a gentle ribbing. Uh, number one. Number two, somebody earlier talked about like uh self-diagnosis isn't good but now we can diagnose people as being fat or something i, I don't understand what the point is and that distinction uh the whole problem earlier was that self-diagnosing a mental illness is hard looking and seeing if somebody is fat is generally pretty easy mm, interesting yeah you know their bmi and everything you know their relationship with their doctor all this i don't know this I don't feels think like no, there's some pretty correlative like like weight measurements that can be made no, no, by the way I, God, yeah, everybody everybody Okay, we're all friends here. Is that I invite true? you all to a dinner party. Yes, you are. You're all friends. Uh, everybody I'm knows that, that all of you behind closed doors are lovely. It's only because you love me. I saw me, you Hunter. all give a big group hug before the show. I don't know what you're talking about. But I want to show it to Hunter to close this round out because sadly, one of you have to go. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that a good indicator that uh, fat shaming is largely like societal as well as just about how um, if you look at it, it's actually oftentimes more dangerous to be underweight than to be slightly overweight. So being overweight is not always a direct um, co like correlation with negative health necessarily. Now, Destiny's absolutely correct that there's absolutely a higher correlation with multitude of health issues if you are uh, dangerously overweight, but they're also plenty of issues when you're dangerously underweight but the way that our society kind of operates right now is we very much glorify the underweight model and we very much shame the people who might even just be slightly overweight like there are some people that are just a little chunky that probably have no real health problems because of it that are like shat shit on is like being like fat fucks or whatever so i definitely think there's something to be said that didn't about. happen with my speedo pig just to be clear and I'm definitely carrying about an extra 30 pounds. So there was a lot of nightmares. I would like that. That was a lot of love given to okay. speed the CTV Speedo pick. Okay, so now we're gonna throw it out there that we are getting the votes tallied up. Could I see the votes? I love you all. It's been fun. Bye. Well, I guess we're not getting that right now. Bye, I'll Hunter. Have to read. Why'd you say bye, Hunter? Ooh, because I said because I yeah because I said I I'll see you all later. <laughs> I'm just you know I'm kidding around. The first vote from the celebrity guest judge is for Hunter Avalon. The second vote is for Shark Zero. No. The third vote. One second, let me just. Where's the um eyeglass? Clear? I can't see it. It's so. <laughs> Um, so I just have to get your monocle. Get your monocle. I can't see it. Oh, damn. You know what? It is Shark Week, so it sucks for you, man. But Shark Zero, you have to, you have to get out of here. That's no, all right. Take care, everyone. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you being here, Shark. Love yeah, having you on. Thank you for the last minute replacement. I really appreciate it. No yeah, problem. man. Yeah, one. that was that was solid. Wonderful. Dangling by a thread. These here. are the final <laughs> four who have made it to the end. Now I gotta say, is this the collection of people I thought it was gonna be? No. We have one voice of reason here. Thank God for CTV. Amen, brother. Thank you. Amen. Now, I gotta say that I'm proud of all of you for making it this far. I know you'll all make up after this and respect each other like good sportsmen. And Demon Mama, this is the second one ever, and you might win the second one as well as the first one. Back to back. That is impressive. CTV, veteran of conservative hippy dippy rumbles and shows. Finally, getting his time in the spotlight to possibly be made champion with the belt. Hunter Avalon, newcomer to this, but rising star on left Twitch after falling star on right Twitch, eh? Then, of course, right, we have you? Steven. Uh, on this trouble. show, I go by destiny. Thank you. He gets me in trouble and doesn't send promos because he's not fun. Well, actually, it's because I disrespect the format. 
to be clear. You disrespect. I disrespected ah, the format. I believe. You disrespected the format. I heard that format. said. Make a note of that. Okay. This is so, a speedo. <laughs> the last topic of the night. Actually, no. This is the second to last topic. The second to last topic of the night is going to be. <clears throat> you know, have any of you ever heard of the term gusano? It's a very interesting word. You know, oh, I, no. I hear it all the time, I guess, as of recent. I don't know what it means. Feels like we said But apparently you guys are going to have to tell me what shit. it means. And if it's a slur or not, I don't really understand it. But uh, you guys got to get you guys got to get that one on the roll for me. Well, you're going to have to explain kind of what the basics are, because oh, I, I don't think I've ever so, heard that word before. Um, I think it's it's an it's a term of endearment, I believe. Uh, used uh, in the uh, Cuban community for uh, certain Cubans uh, in the United States, I believe. And some Cubans in the United States believe it's a slur, some don't. So uh, I wanted to know from you four, is it a slur? Uh, say the word again. So, uh, you got going to make me say it as many times while asking if it's a slur. Gusano. Gusano. Can we, yes. just for purposes, can we call this a G word? Thank you. Okay, we'll call it the G word, okay? Going forward. <laughs> sure. So, um, Thank you. I, can I was going to ask that. So that's, okay. or, or I can offer it to Destiny because, uh, I mean, if Destiny wants to, he can open it. But uh, just figured I'd, I'd grant the uh, the offer if he'd like. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you. I'll take the offer being the Cuban X, Lat Latinx, Gusanx uh, shaver here. Um, I think that. By the way, I did you say I, I don't think it's a slur. And the reason why is, is if it's a slur, then I'm breaking my own rules. Uh -oh. uh, that's the only reason. True. Okay, okay I, well, I think just, it's, just it's, it's, real quick, I looked it up in the Urban Dictionary, yeah. right? And what it says off the top is a Chicano pejorative term for Hispanics or mainstreamed Mexicans derived from Fidel's use for any reactionary, counter revolutionary person. So I, that's I think ur that, that's Urban yeah. Dictionary. So, so I think that it is, I think it's like similar-ish, not the same, but similar-ish kind of to Uncle Tom. And like, I would say that it's, it is, it is a slur. I don't necessarily, well, obviously we all know my position. I don't necessarily think that all slurs are necessarily bad. There might be like an appropriate application to some. It might be that you have like some Cuban in like their 80s or 70s or whatever that were like some dramatically anti-Fidel Castro, like absolutely hated this guy or whatever. And like might be like against the people of Cuba and was like a high wealthy person like maybe gusano might apply to that type of person you know that might be the case uh when people start throwing around gusano just because they happen to know your ethnic background that gets like a little bit weird to me um and it starts to feel like you're just being racist i know that cuban isn't technically a race but i mean like conservatives said that too when they like hate mexicans they're like well it's not racist because it's not a race um so yeah i don't know it gets like i think that there can be like an appropriate application of it but when you're applying it to somebody that has no like strong stance on like fidel castro's regime or what happened in the revolution ever and you're only doing it you found out what their background is that's really weird to me yeah i i kind of yeah, agree with I, I kind of that it's wait am i getting I can, yeah I, I agree with destiny it's it's very contextual i know in the way that it was used against you destiny it did come across definitely like a slur because it was solely because they knew your ethnic background that they were using that term to begin with so yeah i, I think that it's just highly contextual um yeah so my opinion on this well it is a. Uh... For the record, it is a banned word in my in my chat. Uh, I think that it is uh, it treads on a line that gets too uh, too close to com uh, too close for comfort for me or a lot of people in my community with regard to how it's used. I think people uh, some people will claim that it's a a it's used uh, to be like a reference to um, a political standing or an attitude. Um, that's not really how I've seen it be used a lot. Uh, I think once again, I think it treads too close. I think there's some discussion that could be had as far as the root goes. Um, but I think we can also acknowledge that this isn't quite the same thing as something like the N word, which we can we can pretty much exclusively say this is a racial slur. Um, Were you just and looking I just for a reason to say the N word? <clears throat> what? Were you just looking for a reason to put that in people's minds? Because like we I had think, the the I correlation to Uncle just Tom, heard right? And got excited. So no, no, no. I mean, I, I just wonder where we went from Uncle Tom to the N word, which is inherently a completely different meaning from the word that I just read on Urban Dictionary, right? So like, like wait, you bring this up, and then like that, that is a much harsher. It's a much harsher fucking like reason for the word, right? Than Gusano, right? So they're like, since I'm just finding out about this word, which is in fairness, you interrupted Demon Thought, like you interrupted. Yeah, but she interrupted. De she interrupted Destiny, right? So it's like complaining about it's the thing that you're already so wait, actively wait, wait, doing. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so you talk, CTV, you are probably the most intelligent person on this panel. So what I need you to do as the better person is just wait for Demon Mama to finish 
uh, their point, and then we can pass right. it over to you. Okay? All right, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the point of that interruption was. Um, the thing that I have a problem with, I think there is some um, sort of there is some disingenuousness on this on this point on both sides. I think some people claim that it's that they're not using it uh, as like an ethnic or racial slur when in reality the only information they really have, um, kind of like the fat phobia thing. You know, the only information you have is whatever your uh, your immediate check is, and then you jump in on it and attack somebody for it. So I, I think it, it exists in an area where we can see that it hurt that it hurts and bothers a lot of people, and probably should be careful about that. Especially, you know, I'm white, so I, I want to be extra careful about that. I don't want I don't want to fucking uh, like try and speak up on something that doesn't literally doesn't affect me uh directly um but uh i also think that like we should be careful about uh, certain things and I, I do have one question for destiny um and this is just a clarifying question but yesterday i think it was yesterday you said on this very show that that um you were called referring specifically to the g word a racial slur do you i don't know still if i like this right now I'm sorry. Do you do you hold that position? I just I no, just, no, no, no. the problem is right. Is it like clearly Dylan already made it clear that I was going to be speaking next, and now you're trying to shift it to Destiny, which I don't have really a problem with. But I have a point to make that's on point before you start a whole other fucking diatribe of a question. You know what I'm saying? So like allow for time for it to be able to, I, to I, I guess, be on I can, point. I can answer like yes or no. Or quick. Yeah, I would say it's like a racial slur. That's how it's used. Yes. Okay. So that's fine then. I, I'm glad that we're consistent on that. Uh, and I, I, I tend to agree that it is sometimes used as an ethnic or racial slur. Um, but yeah, uh, we should be careful about the things that we say to people specifically when we're uh, making uh, strange attacks against their uh, identity. Uh, I think it's just better to uh, meet people on their arguments and the things that they actually say. Okay, so, so from here, right, like it seems like the word... Because uh, the other meanings, which I didn't say earlier, but I'll go ahead and say it now, is right-wing, sell-out, conservative, neo-fascist, traitor, right? So, like, obviously branding somebody as a traitor with a word is a bad thing from the start, but, like, to what to, 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 this, to Destiny's point earlier when he compared it to Uncle Tom, that's the most relevant example for, I would say, for most Americans to be able to correlate in their mind kind of how this word is used inside of a culture that they don't, frankly, probably understand. Which is why, like, I always exercise extreme caution and i know make that face i burped because i'm drinking beer it's awesome right now we know exercise extreme caution right you're not even old enough to i don't even know why you're commenting right so are you drunk right now you all right but uh not yet right but i'm definitely high so that being said i'm glad that we're all concerned about my health right when earlier destiny was concerned with your health and you didn't want to hear that right so moving on from here right I'm self-diagnosing. I with know it's fucking illness, amazing. Buddy. As soon I mean, as you start, shit. right? CTV's got something to say for everyone in the fucking room. Eventually, I'll get to make my point without being interrupt on? interrupted. What am I you, on? You I'm on fucking Coker? high on Mostly Jesus. Weed. Oh well. Okay. High on Jesus, right? That's what I am tonight, right? Damn. Now, another now, lockdown for God. All right. Oh, I know, right? So now, moving forward from here. Right. This is where, like, I exercise extreme caution, especially when it comes to learning other cultures, not to the point to where it controls my language, but it does control my behavior to the point to where I want to make sure that I'm conveying to that person that, like, one, I do not understand what your culture is like. Like, don't I'm not the fucking guy. I don't know everything. Explain to me. I take the role of, of student, uh, for lack of a better word. Right. It teach me what it is that your culture is like so that I can be able to understand that. And then through those individual action or uh, interactions that I have with people, it allows me to be able to expand the level of knowledge that I have about a lot of different cultures and backgrounds and things that people, you know, went through are currently going through, uh, you know, like what their family is like, what their country is like, all of these things. So this particular word, Gusano, right? Like, Sounds like a word that probably is not a very good word to use, but this is also one of those things where, like, those people that are on the left definitely have no problem with painting someone as an Uncle Tom as soon as they step outside the bounds of what the Democrat Party wants, right? So then this takes us back to the earlier conversation that was happening with regard to, in to identity politics, right? So, like, these types of things, while, you know, disrespectful, but used to make a you know, a bullying point to try to shut someone up doesn't actually solve the problem in a way in which would be fruitful for everyone moving forward. All it really does is create divisiveness. 
So at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what is the goal that you're trying to achieve? Are you trying to achieve unity, as Biden would have us all fucking believe from his fucking speech, right? Or are you actually trying to create divisiveness, right? So then, like, that's where understanding how these words are used, when they're used, the, the way in which they're used, right? Okay. So, like, understand you moving got, forward that Gusano... A little bit. We are, we, yeah. we're, we're, going, we're going a little long. That moved me. Along, Thank you, man. CTV. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. So I was about to wrap it up, but it does it. Is there? There doesn't seem to be much disagreement then on this. So I guess no, we'll not just, really. We'll just yeah, wrap this up then, and I'm gonna be looking for the votes. So the next round for those, I want you to start thinking about this now. The next round is a simple round. It's not even really politically based, but you can make it if you want to. The next round, before we decide who's getting voted out, is why you should be hippy dippy champion mm. obviously uh, vosh was not the most respectful champion of the business as i hope everyone on the stage agrees as he uh, disrespected it by not treating the title that gave him so much prestige with respect so the question is why should you be the champion and why should the other people not be champion should we not legitimize them should do they have bad positions or uh, are they um uh, maybe an imbecile of some sort and why should you be champion do you have the votes from okay the first vote from the celebrity guest judge is for ctv the second and third votes are from judges who must have also not been critically thinking because they're all for ctv sadly ctv uh this is obviously a robbery and i will be having many inspections into this that that, that you would be screwed out it's such a such a strong veteran not only of the united states military but of the hippy dippy brand no doubt no doubt, yeah. and that, and this is exactly would have been the perfect time for me to be able to make my case. But it's obvious that the judges are threatened by my mere presence here. Right. And election rigging. Election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you saw the video, you can see it right behind you, Dylan. Like I, like as soon as you closed the voting, I saw them pull the box out from underneath the table. I want to know where those votes came from. Like, look, 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 I, look, I'm like, really curious if we can see those tapes. I have look. a 480p video. It's holy shit. We're gonna hey, do yeah. an audit. Hey, maybe we got. Uh, maybe we should quiet, quiet, quiet down. Okay, respect the business and what it's brought us. So I'm gonna say, CTV. Sadly, uh, you need to. You need to get off my stage. All right. Well, Dylan, have a good one, and uh, you know, hopefully, I'm I'm rooting for Destiny at this point. Right. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Looks like you got somebody in your corner, Destiny. So the last round. For so for the judges who uh, consider CTV's endorsement, that will weigh heavily. For the last round, it's simple. <laughs> Why should you be hippy dippy champion? And why should the people next to you not? You have about, I would say, I'll, I'll, I'll decide when it's been enough. You know what? I'll put a question mark on the time slot, so do what you can. You may begin. I'll go last. I'll go last, last. I'll go last, last, last. I'll go first. The reason why I'm going first is the same reason why I would be the best hippy dippy champion. Because I'll fight with anybody. I don't give a fuck. I'm not here trying to build a career off of you small streamer three-figure motherfuckers. I don't give a fuck which one of you hate me. I don't care what type of topic we talk about. And I don't care who wants to come on and talk shit about whatever thing. I'll come here and I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any motherfucker. Okay? I'm not Hunter trying to rebrand himself. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. If that's true, why'd you never accept any of the opportunities they gave you to challenge Vosh for the title? Because you didn't give us a real topic. I think you said maybe you guys can debate capitalism versus socialism. I, I did that I once with Richard that. Wolf. Okay. However, okay, one of us isn't here on this panel tonight because they are scared of the other person. And I'm just going to say that I'm here. Okay. All these other motherfuckers, they have a hippie dippy show up down with somebody or they have like a final with somebody, they're going to be too scared to bring out the heavy hits because you know what? At the end of the day, all you motherfuckers go back to the same little Discord groups and talk to each other. All you guys have friendships that you're worried about hurting. All of you have bridges that you guys are constantly repairing. But you know what? I'm the only one out here willing to risk it all, willing to burn shit down just to give you a glorious fucking fire by As which to light your <laughs> show. Okay? burns every bridge that's why you should win yeah, and destiny would you agree with the statement uh vosh screwed vosh vosh screwed vosh what yeah, happened with the, the title, with the, vosh the title right that he screwed himself and that's why he doesn't have the title anymore um yeah i guess isn't that why exactly okay um which well you both said last last so which one's gonna do it all right, I should win the Hippy Dippy Championship because one, Destiny's been doing debates forever, so it's not really fair to compare me to him. No, I'm just kidding. But also because uh, Demon Mama, I love you, but I should still win. That's my that's my thing right there. I don't know. I was told that I need to make something ironic for this, and then I didn't. I couldn't think of anything in time. Sorry, Dylan. So 
So it's okay if I get voted out off on this topic. I'm not doing anything <laughs> ironic. I'm going to tell you exactly why I genuinely believe that I should win the Hippie Dippy. Dylan, do you remember the first podcast that I was on? I think you do. Do you know which number it was? Was it two or was it four? Down yonder. You don't have to answer that, I guess. I've been on the Hippie Dippy. I've been here showing up for the show, showing up on time. I've been here uh, keeping the technical issues to a low, showing up and showing love for this goddamn show uh, for well over a year now. Um, and that's pretty exciting to me. It's something I'm very, very proud of. And I think it's something that I deserve. In addition to my, uh, in addition to my arguments being really rock solid tonight, um, I've always shown up here. I've shown up. I've fought. I've been through championship after championship. I've taken losses and wins on the chin. And I'm here again. And I think that that belt is mine. And I think that belt is mine because I came here and I honestly represented my positions. I didn't come on to this show a day ago and talk about uh, what was the what was the exact wording that Destiny had on here? Uh, how everyone the people who disagree with him are and I quote um, the uh, what was the word Down syndrome Avengers? I didn't come on here and lie <laughs> about people's positions. I didn't come on here and uh, and weasel about the things that I've said online or offline. I came here and I told you the honest truth of who I am and what I believe. And because of that, I think I deserve the belt. I think I deserve the belt more than anybody here by a long shot. And I think everybody in the audience, including the judges, know that that's the case, that I have poured my heart and soul into this show and that that belt belongs to me. Beautiful. Uh, we need the boats. So is there anything uh, any of you want to say before the decision comes in? Yeah, I will say something. Uh, I, I didn't know we were attacking each other in our uh, final statements, but yeah, I remember yeah, I when uh, I remember when Vosh was here and Demon Mama had to have an argument with Vosh. And I remember how gentle that conversation was because she was so worried about saying anything mean or saying anything that would uh, uh, burn that connection. So I'll just say, you know, it would be oh, pretty sad if we had a situation. It would be bad if we had a situation again where you had like two finalists or whatever that were debating for some royale, but they were friends with each other. So they went like super, super, super soft on each other. That's what I'd say. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Is that a dis um, I don't know, what, I don't, I don't know what that's called, or... reference to. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just did a video where I critiqued some of Hunter's takes in good faith. Um, and also, and Demon Mama, I, just, I still I want to call you out a little bit about what you said earlier because I had it written down about your anti intellectualism. Oh, sure. If you want to afterwards, we can talk. I would love to. I'm going to have a little cool down. You can pop on and we can debate about whatever you'd like. Um, in addition, like, I mean, I don't know if, I, in fact, I know you know this, Destiny. Once again, another example of you playing, uh, uh, playing dumb. Uh, not telling the truth, but you know that you watched the debate that me and Vosh had. In fact, I think I recall your words were something along the lines of, ooh, let's hope for this bur bridge burning, something along those lines. You know that I fight against Vosh. There's no niceness going on here. The, I am very honest about the things that I say. I present myself honestly. I am Demon Mama, a political edutainer, and I want that motherfucking belt. I want that belt because I deserve it. You didn't even shoot a promo for this, Destiny. So what the fuck are you even talking about? I'm sorry, you but know hey, you, don't. you are literally either, so you are nice literally and... the the central committee to like Vosh's son. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but yeah, definitely, bro. <laughs> Keep coping. You ever, you hey, by just, the way, are you I think we should just. Hey, you know what? Okay, we're gonna wait. Uh, the I reason why this taking wait, 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 wait. So The reason it's taking so long, long, long is we had a how did, we had another three way tie. So I this is give me a second. I'm. I'm not going to be the one to make the decision. I'm making the make the decision, okay? Continue. Give us a real topic, yeah. Dylan. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This is I, I honestly this is I hope I just get voted off so that you guys can just go at it. I mean, how many how many uh how many promos have I have I shot for this? How how serious have I taken the game? And you know what? I even maybe call a little out too Dylan. seriously. Yeah, maybe a little too seriously, but I don't know. This is fun <laughs> for me. This is something that I'm passionate about. I don't think I take myself too seriously. I think I present myself exactly how I represent. Unlike uh, some people on here, uh, what's the what's the quote from Destiny? Uh, nothing nice. I say. Can, okay, you know what? I'm gonna just take over the moderating now. Stop with the passive aggressiveness. Just come on. Wait, he go asked at us it. to. Someone asked us to. I don't think it has to be I, passive I want, aggressive. I want just to say what you want to say. Please, can no, we? Just let's exactly just have some blood say. sports thrown. Yeah. Some, well, some we can't blood throw blood sports because then everybody will try to report me on every single platform again because everything okay, I say sure. is apparently okay, so offensive. Again. Speaking of conspiracy, that might as well yeah. be your fucking CIA. We just had anytime a anything goes wrong. Oh, it must be the lefty. I mean, like when you guys are literally all. Wait. Re oh, sorry. Oh no! Okay. Oh, the Wait. lefties are coming for me. Again. Aren't you? Weren't you? We just had a person change a vote. Oh man. Now, I want to make everyone aware that. 
this tournament, you all entered it with a 6.25% chance of winning, uh, just based off of the amount of people that were in it. So you all got tremendously far and beat the odds up to this point. Now, the original vote was that Danabo voted for Hunter Avalon, Katarana voted for Destiny, and Vadim Newquist voted for Demon Mama. Is this vote to now, keep or kick? What are these votes? See, like? who, who's the winner? Oh, okay. Now, wow. it has changed. One of us has changed it, and the person who has changed their vote is Vadim Newquist. And he has changed it to Destiny, making Destiny the winner of the Hippy Dippy Championship this time around. Uh, congratulations to Destiny. Congratulations to all the competitors for getting this far. And genuinely, congratulations to everyone for getting to the final three. Cool. Thanks, Dylan. It was an honor. Wonderful. I'm definitely not going to go cry now. I wish Wonderful. I could say it was challenging, but honestly, this is probably one of the easiest Royale type shows I've ever been on. I mean, you know, we've got. I was expecting something nice a lot more intense. I'll we've be got a Hunter nice over guy, here yeah. who's a nice. He's a nice guy, a nice chap, a nice lad. Um, we've got Demon Mom over here who's clearly outmatched. Um, maybe you're used to Vosh pulling his punches on you, so that's why you uh, tried to step to the ring. Vosh but you know, maybe next time we'll see what happens. You know. <laughs> What? I just I hope I hope you didn't get like destroyed so hard on the show that you'd self diagnose yourself with something else. But you know I, I wish you the best. Oh damn! Of luck, hey, okay? you're taking more shots at it. Damn, hey, dude. Hey, you know, let's it, slow this down. <laughs> I'm not having it happen on my program. Okay, look, just because you're the champion does not mean I endorse his statements. I just want to make that clear. I'll moderate okay? for you guys. The voting was out of my control. Okay, <laughs> the voting was out of my control. Now I do want to say to everybody involved, Hunter Avalon is the first time he's ever been involved in one of these types of programs, and he got very far, and I'm very proud of him. You can shout Thank yourself you, out. Yes, yeah, so you can check me out on my YouTube channel, Hunter Avalon. Thank now, you, for, for Demon Mama, Demon Mama won the first one and got to the final three in the second one. That is an amazing achievement, and I want that recognized by people in chat. Like, that's really good. And for Destiny, um, I mean, you know, it took Vosh losing the championship, of course, for him to become champion. I mean, interesting. But he is champion, and he won. So, of course, that's an achievement. Um, he still plays League, so that's a problem. But, you know, at least he has this to help kind of buffer that out. Congratulations, Destiny. Uh, you send me your, like, the uh, whatever, like, appeal box, and we'll send the championship belt over to you. Congratulations. Awesome. I got the actual Congrats, physical buddy. belt. It's going to be in my... Yeah, you get an actual physical belt, and you get to keep it. Yes, forever. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Great. So, cool. for everybody at home, uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, Xander Hall deserved it. Uh, Vosh, uh, uh, worst champion, because he screwed the business and insulted the business. And uh, you all have a blessed... Oh, do we get to do um, shout-outs at the end? Sure, do a shout-out. Okay, I like to do one shout-out. Vermin Hands, you're a fucking piece-of-shit loser, and I feel so horrible for the life that you must live, because god damn. I... I what did... What? Oh, yeah, that was a good point. Really? I forgot that this is always what he does. I thought I thought he was gonna be like, I don't know. I want to give a shout out to Nathan. You can achieve it. This no, is meant no, for you no. 20 years from now. I didn't know. You should have seen old Desi Pedal Destiny I... to get the douche. Okay, 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 okay. Anyway, thank you all for coming by. We're gonna raid a friend of mine. You all have a blessed day. Uh, everyone, get off my stage. Goodbye. <sighs> okay, good job, guys. Um, I would also like to say I'm very disappointed that Vermin is engaging in death threats. I'm not even a content creator. Die mad. Die mad. Wow. Actually telling me to die in a chat. And telling somebody to throat me in DMs. Now, did she mean rape? Or did she just mean stomp on my throat? Was it sexual or was it violent in nature? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. This behavior is abhorrent. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Are you guys ready to McGregor the, our belt away?